Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, how you folks doing? Welcome here, welcome to another edition of Monday Night Raw. I'm your host, Conman167, and guys, today's show looks pretty good. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a solid, solid show. We are building towards a few shows right now. We're obviously building towards Super Showdown. We're also building towards the Elimination Chamber, and we're building towards... Um, WrestleMania along at the same time. It, it's it's interesting. It's a very interesting time inside of the WWE right now. But everybody, let's just jump right into this thing. It is time for the Con Man Certified Roll Call. So who do we got here today? We got Steve Taylor. We got Tristan King. We got Jesse Miles. We got X D D Shown. We got Wally Hejas. How you doing, my friend? We got Cindy Dyer. We got Beast. We got Alexander. I couldn't read your name in time. How you doing there, Casey Rose? Thanks for the $2. We got Sanguis up in here. We got Beast. Nice to see you, my friend. We got Thad Raspberry. We got White Wolf Gaming. Welcome to the stream. Uh, who else in here? We got Chantel Vishore. I tried to say your name. Let me try it again. Vishore? Something like that. The Ace Ashton is in here. We got Tyler Crawford. Nice to see you. Christian Vega. Jameson Jackson. Great to see you as well. Xavier How King Terminator made his way in here as well. Michael Duncan Tell. Jason Dalton, Luke Vander Bloomer, welcome, my friend. And let's say a final hello to Plumpy. How you doing, my friend? Welcome to the stream. All right, so today, everybody, Monday Night Raw looks like it is going to be a solid show. Like I said, we're building to multiple shows here at the same time. Elimination Chamber, Super Showdown, and WrestleMania all being built at at the same time so it's a gonna be an interesting show for sure uh we're gonna see matt hardy battle randy orton tonight in a uh, no holds barred match so there's rumors that jeff hardy could return those could just be rumors uh we're gonna find out what lies ahead for becky lynch in the wake of Shayna baszler's attack i believe here tonight they're going to reveal the fact that we now have an elimination chamber match for the women at this chamber it is going to be Shayna baszler versus Oh, goodness, I've got to go through memory here. Shayna Baszler versus Asuka versus Ruby Riot versus Sarah Logan versus Liv Morgan versus... I forget who the sixth person is. Natalia? I think it's Natalia. I could be wrong. Regardless, though, that is going to probably be revealed here tonight. Uh, it should be a good show, everyone. But we might be, honestly, starting off with Randy Orton versus Matt Hardy. All right, Randy Orton has arrived. So Tony PV says he hears voices playing. Well, you might be hearing more than that as Matt Hardy could be on his way out and there could be a lot of noise on his way out of the WWE without a doubt. Very well could be. Um, this might be the match that goes down right now. It might happen later on in the show. But we're sure going to find out. Whoa! Whoa! Okay. McIntyre versus MVP tonight. So it's going to be Drew McIntyre versus MVP. WWE getting a bit of value out of their latest backstage producer signed by MVP. Also tonight we're going to hear a sermon from the Monday Night Messiah. It's going to be... Seth Rollins. And then also here tonight it's going to be Becky Lynch Bikes Back. So whatever that means, I, I don't know if Becky Lynch is actually going to sink her teeth into Shayna Baszler. Personally, I wouldn't want to do that. I think that uh, it'd be kind of gross. But you know, you know, to each their own. Sometimes you like a little bit of vamp vampirism, you know. It, it's got to happen. Sometimes you just got to sink your teeth into another human flesh, you know. You just got to do it. And uh, it is sometimes a passage to becoming a man. You know, I don't judge. Sometimes a passage to becoming a woman. Sometimes you just got to sink your teeth into another human being. It happens. <laughs> uh, but welcome, everybody, here once again to the show. If you would like to vote in a poll right now, we got a poll available over on Twitter.com slash Conman167. You can vote and think if you think the show, if you're excited for, hell yeah. If you're not, say no. I know I'm a little confusing when I speak sometimes. I get a little rambly, but hopefully you guys can uh, withstand my commentary, and hopefully we'll have a fun show here today, everybody. Here is Randy Orton.
No way. Is he just going to point to the Titan Tron? That is what he's going to do. No way. They're literally just going to show what Randy Orton has done over the last couple of weeks. Just, or just last week alone. The boos from the crowd. The, ri the why Randy signs. Like, pfft. WWE's got something here with Randy Orton. No doubt about it. And it's kind of weird to sit here and have to try to defend Randy Orton's career. Why he should be in this position at this point. The dude is only like, what, 38 years old, I believe? 39? Something like that. Might only be 37. I think he's a little older than that. But he's not that old. He's a legend in the business already. And there's arguably nobody better at being a safe performer in the ring than Randy Orton and working it to a high degree. Randy Orton's in a class all of his own, so to be quite honest, um, there, there's no reason why Randy Orton shouldn't be featured as a top star here in 2020. He really shouldn't. Uh, Steve Taylor says he turned 40 last year, I think. Okay, all right, so he just turned 40, so... Still relatively young, man. Still relatively young. Casey Rose says, glad I got the upper hand against Becca today. Yeah, I'm glad too there, Casey Rose. Uh, Becca wasn't happy, that's for sure. She heard that she lost, and she was like, oh, you said you said I, I'm going to win. I, 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 guess, I guess we're breaking up. That's really how she kind of answered it. And uh, I was like, no, we're not breaking up. She's like, okay, fine. Uh, but welcome to the stream, everyone. Just waiting for the show to really get underway. I'm excited for Randy Orton versus Edge when it does inevitably happen. Like, it feels like a lot of people have kind of forgotten about the Edge storyline right now. It, not even forgotten about it, but it's just been put to the back burner with Matt Hardy, you know, with his, uh, with his recent involvement with Randy Orton. And now we're going to get this match with Matt Hardy. And then there's the question, is Matt Hardy going to leave WWE after that? Which he likely is, yes. So there's uh, some interesting stories going on right now. But I, I can't wait to see Edge get back. Back to Randy Orton. supposed to face Matt Hardy in a no-holds-barred match. But after what happened last week, I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. What? Even still, even still, from what I understand, Matt is in the back trying to get cleared from the doctors in the locker room. But like I said, after happened last week, that is not going to happen. Wow. Why, man? Like, uh, I know that he's hurt, the but... The Hardys are known for jumping off the highest of highs and crashing to the lowest of lows. But even still, if Matt Hardy faced me tonight in a no-holds-barred match... Uh-oh. Is he here? Oh, That's minute. Matt Harton's Titantron. Matt Hardy's Titantron just illuminated. And here's Matt. Here's Matt. No, it's not Jeff Hardy, guys. It's Matt Hardy. Randy. He's in a neck brace right now. Don't stop on my accord. But instead of talking about me, why don't you finally confess to why you tried to take away Edge's second chance? Why you took his surgically repaired neck and you smashed it between two chairs. I mean, after last week, I can relate. Hmm. I still want to know what in the hell is wrong with you, Randy Orton? What the hell? What the hell? You didn't like it when I asked you that, did you? You didn't like it so much that you wanted to make me feel the exact same way you made Edge feel. You wanted to take all of these people, all of this, 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 my passion away from me. But you can, Randy, no one can. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And I came here tonight to fight you. Yeah. 
and to the surprise of no match. one, do it. The WWE doctors in the back, they won't clear me to compete in a match tonight. Boo! So make it unsanctioned. Do but it. I'm a man of my word. I am here, Randy. And much like Edge, I have grit. I have grit. I won't quit. Matt Hardy will not die. You can knock me and Edge down all you want. We will always get back up. And I can promise you this, Randy. I don't know what the future holds for Matt Hardy, but it damn sure won't be determined on your terms. It will be determined on my terms. Okay. You should have said goodbye last week while you could still leave the arena on your own two feet. Uh-oh. This isn't good. Matt, no, man. Don't get in the ring, dude. Oh, don't you get in that ring. I, I think Matt Hardy's about to die, guys. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Look at you, you're a sitting duck. What could you do? What could you do if I decided to RKO you right now, right here uh. where you stand? Don't do it, Randy. Don't do it, Randy. Matt, you have balls, I'll give you that, but you will never understand. Nobody will ever understand why I did what I did. Matt, from the bottom of my heart, I respect you and everything you have done. I always have, I always will, but Edge, Edge, I not only respect Edge, but I, I love him like a brother. Okay, so why did listen why I, did you attack him then i am sorry i am sorry you're not sorry arton i am truly sorry you're not sorry what 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 really remorseful Randy Orton just apologized? Huh. Randy Orton, um... Randy Orton now, I think, overtaking Bobby Lashley as the most confused man on earth. Uh-oh. Hang on. Hang on. No! Uh, guys, this might not be good. This is not good. This is not good at all. I think Randy Orton... Oh, yeah, Matt Hardy gets a steel chair. Okay, so Matt Hardy getting a steel chair. He knows Orton's about to slither back into that ring. Oh, God, guys. This is not good for Randy Orton. Or, sorry, for Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy's in a neck brace, but... You know what I would love to see from Matt Hardy right now? Just for as Randy Orton slides back in the ring, Matt Hardy rips off the neck brace showing that he's okay. And then they get the actual match going on right now. That would be amazing setup to the street fight right now. If that's the way this match begins. But Matt Hardy with the steel chair in hand. Randy Orton looking to slither back inside the ring. Back in there, man. Matt Hardy, ooh, Matt, no, oh, Matt Hardy shot the first shot, and Randy Orton ducked out of the way and dropped him right over the top rope, Matt Hardy in a neck brace, no, after the, after, I, what, what is it called again, the Chon, the Concherito, con, <laughs> Concerto, 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 something like that, I think that's how it's called, I, I didn't grow up in that time frame when they used that move and knew exactly what they were called, 
regardless of the concerto. My god, I think he's about to be RKO'd. Yep! RKO to Matt Hardy. Ah, oh, Matt. Matt, man. But, like, did Randy Orton mean to say he was sorry? Orton is literally fighting something within him. Orton grabs the steel chair. God damn it, he's gonna do it again. No, go! Come on, Randy! Come on, Randy, man. Come on, dude. I mean, at this point, you're just sad. You're just a sad individual. Look at this crap. Oh, come on. Just trying to end the career of Matt Hardy. Like, I know he's on his way out of the WWE. But dude's in a neck brace right now. You're a sick son of a bitch. Do you know that there, Randy Orton? Oh, my God. Matt Hardy was bent over. Is, is Randy Orton going to punt him? No. From behind the steel chair again. Where's Jeff? Where's Christian? Hell, where's Edge? I hope Edge can be back soon. But frig, man. Are we not going to get the match now between Orton and uh, and Hardy? Oh my god, he's going to do it again. He's going to do it again to Matt. No, come on, Randy. No, I don't want to watch this again. I... I'm tired of seeing my favorites get hit over the head with a freaking steel chair. Just Randy, man. Please stop, dude. Please stop, man. Come on. The referees are starting to come out there, but Matt doesn't deserve this. No, is he going to take the brace? Oh, you sick, 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 sick man. You sick, sick, sick man. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to watch this. Oh, I don't want to watch this. No. Uh, Randy, no. Orton pulls up. He's going to follow through, isn't he? Oh, come on, Orton. Don't do it. Just put the chair down. Put the chair down. Put the chair down. Hey, I think Randy Orton listened to me. Thank you, Randy. Thank you for listening to me. I appreciate you taking a, uh, a little bit of a moment to breathe. I appreciate you just listening to Con Man, hearing out to his reasoning. I, I, know, I know you're a little pissed off over something, but thank you. Thank you for listening to me, Randy Orton. I really do appreciate that. All right, mate. I'm so glad that Randy Orton listened to Con... Oh, come on! Come on! No, he's going back for a steel chair. No, no, no! No, no! You were listening to me so good! You were listening to me, Randy Orton! Come on! No! He pulls Matt Hardy back to the outside. Oh, I can't, I, I can't watch this. I can't watch this. This is going to be real nasty. He, Matt Hardy's about to be written off TV for good. We're about to see the final few moments of Matt Hardy's career in the WWE, probably. No, 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 no. Matt Hardy's... Matt Hardy's head now on the steel steps. And Randy, I'm going to try one more time. Randy Orton, please listen to Con Man. Okay, please listen to Con Man. No, okay, please listen to Con Man. Put the chair down, Randy Orton. Uh, you listened to me briefly for a second earlier. Please put the chair down. Randy Orton, as a longtime fan, I've been watching you since 2005. Please put the chair down. Randy, no, 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 no. Bad Randy! Bad Snake! Bad Viper! Put it down! Right now, Randy! Put it down! No, Randy! Ah!
That's it, he's dead. Matt Hardy has literally been killed at the hands of a viper named Randy Orton. You bad, bad snake. He's sorry. You're not sorry. You're not sorry. You're an asshole. Rogers hometown hockey on Sportsnet. It's the people and the stories that unite us. I always wanted to exceed expectations. Stories of courage. I felt I could do anything. Gratitude. I was open for tolerance like they gave me around love. And pride. I love going back there. It's home. There's no better place to be. A Sunday inspiration from place to place. Rogers Hometown Hockey, Sundays on Sportsnet. So, Randy Orton killed Matt Hardy. Um, we just watched a murder happen on live TV. You know, it, a real murder. It, 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 it dead. Killed him. Um... I thought there's supposed to be cops at Monday Night Raw. Apparently, hitting somebody over the head with a uh, with a deadly weapon isn't isn't worth just stepping in. I, I don't know. The cops suck in the arena, is what I'm trying to say. He's a bad snake. Okay, guys, welcome everybody to the show. My name's called Conman167, Connor, Con, whatever you want to call me. Not asshole, though. That's Randy Orton. But, guys, if you are enjoying the show, please make sure you leave a like on this video. Also, making sure you are subscribed to the channel. And also, everybody, make sure you turn those notifications on if you enjoy what it is I do here. You enjoy my commentary, or you enjoy my play-by-play, uh, -play, or you enjoy the live chat, or you enjoy the feel. Whatever you enjoy, if you enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe. But everybody, also, if you enjoy truly what I do here and you want to continue to support it, please consider dropping a little donation. It doesn't matter how much or how little. Any little bit is appreciated. So, talk about a hot start to Monday Night Raw. That, those type of segments right there are is the stuff that make people want to tune into wrestling in the future. Those are the segments that make you believe, that make you feel emotion for the characters there right that was 23 minutes of pure emotion 23 minutes from going from the intro of the show to when it began to feeling pure hatred when you saw randy orton and then the video package reminded you why then matt hardy comes out cuts a promo reminds you of edge as well not only what edge went through but what matt hardy went through as well then Randy Orton apologizes, makes you believe that he's going to do the right thing. Maybe he truly is sorry. But then he comes back and brings the fight right to Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy tried his best, swung first, missed, and it cost him. Randy Orton then uh, went for the concerto, put it away, said that he wasn't going to do that. Instead, chose to do the concerto on the steel steps. And that has essentially ended the career of Matt Hardy. I, um... I don't think Matt Hardy is going to be seen again here in the WWE. Fantastic segment. Um, and if that is truly the end of Matt, then Matt, thank you, my friend. I know we had a giant, giant spiel last week at the end of what we thought was your career. But you obviously came back this week and put the segment over even more. That was beautifully done, Matt Hardy. So if that is the last time... Anyways, for the last... Uh, what am I trying to say? Something about Matt Hardy coming back. Yeah, so if that was the last time, Matt, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you for all of the entertainment through the years. You were uh, you were amazing, Matt. Here we go, though. Back to the ring. Oh, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Gentlemen, we are back here on Monday Night Raw. Fun silence tonight from the WWE Universe after what happened before the break. We witnessed one of the most heinous acts ever committed by Randy Orton. Yeah. Everybody, you know what I want us to do in the chat for Matt Hardy? What I want us to do in the chat for Matt Hardy right now? I want us all collectively to put our hands out to the side. Okay, not not straight forward. Okay, that's 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 not something that we should be doing. Out to the side, and we should all collectively chant delete. Here we go, guys. In five, four, three, two, one. Delete. 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 Yes. Oh, ah. Remember that laugh that he did one time? Oh, yes. Oh, ah. <laughs> there we go. I love the deletes. I love the deletes. I will delete you. That was weird. That was rough. Ignore that one. <laughs> Um, tonight we're also supposed to get Aleister Black versus Eric Rowan. Should be good. Is that going to go down now? It is. So is the cage still around? Does, yes, there we go. He still has the cage. So do everybody who was saying that the cage was gone, that they were done featuring the cage, uh, that they were writing the cage off TV, that we were never going to find what's in the cage. You are wrong. We are going to still see at least Eric Rowan carrying that cage to the ring. Um, whether we find out what's in it or not, I don't know. But this should be a good match. It's going to be Aleister Black versus Eric Rowan. I think in this matchup, there is either going to be somebody who tries to peep inside the cage and Eric Rowan gets distracted, turns around and gets hit with the Black Mass. Or Aleister Black is going to... Uh, is just going to beat him straight up and there's not going to be any weird stuff with the cage. But personally, I think whoever Rowan's next feud is going to be is going to try to look in the cage, even if it's just somebody minor. And that's going to distract him enough for Aleister Black to hit him with the black mass. And that will be the end of the match. One, two, three. That's what I think is going to go down. But here we go, everybody. First matchup of the evening. Aleister Black, baby. Versus Rowan. Do you think we find out what's in the cage tonight? So, here we go. Who will win is the question. Hashtag raw. Uh, Alistair Black or Rome. Randy is not a good snake. He is a very, very bad snake. Very, very bad snake. What do you guys think is inside the cage? Do you have any guesses? I still think it's a rat. Real quick shout outs to Motocock. And uh, Francisco Encarnacion, thank you so much, guys, for following me over on Twitter.com slash Conman167. Alistair Black with a running knee to start things off. But Rowan, remember the last time that we've seen Rowan was at the Royal Rumble when Brock Lesnar tossed him over the top rope just like that. Alistair Black gets Rowan out of the, the match over the top rope. Now a kick right to Rowan's chest. Here he goes. Moon Salt. Nobody home. Black just got run over by Rowan. Yeah, Rowan's... You know what, guys? I'm going to say this right now. Rowan is very, very, very good. Very good. I know that he, he's he been in the WWE for a long time, right? And he's never really gotten any true pushes. Uh, some of his best work came when he was within the... Uh, or not within, but when he was with Daniel Bryan. Some of his best work was produced during that time. He really learned a lot as a performer, and I think he grew incredibly and immensely during that time. I think right now Eric Rowan is a very effective big man. He's got a bit of a gimmick just to try and um, try to separate him from other big men, which I think is very important. He's got the big beard, which makes him stand out a little bit as well. 
And he's very good in the ring. I, he does not get credit for being as good as he is in the ring. He knows how to move quickly around the ring. He's no Braun Strowman in terms of marketability. And he's no Braun Strowman in terms of uh, just sheer attraction size, right? He's kind of the weird in-between. He's not a uh, ugly big man that can't wrestle. But he's also not a marketable big man like the big show Andre the Giant and Braun Strowman. I know Braun Strowman isn't quite at their level, but you know what I mean. Kind of like that upper echelon of giants. He's somewhere in between. He falls close into the realms of like a... Uh, trying to go back through some of the big men that we have had through the business that never amounted to too much. Uh, but were always solid, solid hands. Um, who would you guys compare Rowan to from the past? Snitsky? Snitsky was interesting. Snitsky was interesting. You're probably right. He's probably closer to Snitsky than anything. Um, Ryback? Mark Henry. He's not Mark Henry, guys. No, not Mark Henry. Uh, I would say Mark Henry is a... Uh, I would say Mark Henry is definitely a step above Rowan. I would say. The Great Khali? No. Great Khali is in the bottom echelon of superstars who could uh, work. Big men superstars, at least. Albert and Tensai, uh, Tensai didn't amount to much. Obviously, A-Train and Albert was a solid, always there mid-card. Yeah. You know, he, he's, uh, oh, there you go, Colton Starman. That's not a terrible one. Big Boss Man, just a kind of different character. That's kind of, uh, that's, that's a good one. Yeah, a guy who has been in multiple factions, who has had a run as a solos guy. He was a big man in the ring. Usually put over other superstars. Yeah, you know what? Uh, Big Boss Man. Big Boss Man. That's a great comparison. Eric Rowan and Big Boss Man are very, very similar in terms of where they fit on the card. That's great. I love that comparison. That's great. No, Kane's above uh, Rowan. Kane is a world champion material. I'm not saying Rowan isn't, but I'm also not saying Rowan is. <laughs> Into the cover. Count of one. Count of two. Kick out by Alistair Black. So again, guys, if you would like to vote in the poll for who you think is going to win, you can head on over to twitter.com slash conman167 and make sure you vote in the poll for who you think, either Alistair Black or Eric Rowan. Also, while you're over there, guys, make sure you drop a follow on conman167's channel and also make sure you're subscribed to this one right here. And if you're enjoying the channel, you can always drop a little donation. doesn't matter how much or how little. Now Rowan sends Alistair Black into the corner. Right hand catches him there. Another question or another right hand, I should say. But Dragon Gamer has a question for me. What is that question there, Dragon Gamer? Ask away, buddy. That goes for everyone. You can always ask questions, and I'll try to get back to them as quickly as possible. Rowan now lifting Black and just going to swing him right in the barricade. Oh, that had to hurt. Lil Jarvis, thank you very much for subscribing, my friend. Welcome to the channel. Alistair. Oh, hung up over the barricade again. Do you think we will see what's in the cage in this match? I don't know. Uh, I would like to say it would be cool if Eric Rowan's next feuding person unveils the cage in this matchup. And then Aleister Black hits him with the Black Mass to win the match. Kind of protects Rowan. Keeps Aleister Black looking strong, right? And it's impressive to see the Aleister Black finishing move of Black Mass get all the way up to the height of Rowan. It would be cool. Do I think that's going to happen? No. I, I don't think it's going to be revealed in this match. I think somebody is going to try to take a look inside the cage, and that's going to distract Rowan just, just enough. It is a higher chance than we've ever had, Colton. Absolutely. Here we go. Moon Salt lands this time, and Black got him. Beautiful. Aled Thomas says, what if it's Bob in the cage? <laughs> yeah. Justin Beverly says, it's Mercy the Buzzard inside the cage. If it is, that would be different, to say the least. Very different. Step up knee there from Aleister Black. That could be enough. Count of two. Kick out by Rowan. A little bit there, Ghostface. A little bit. Uh, what if it's a snake? Well, 
if it's a snake, it's not the end of the world. But it's a little weird. Oh, nice little block there. I think Alistair Black was going for the Black Mass. Uh-oh, Rowan's looking for the Iron Claw. Back elbow reversal there from Black. But a clubbing blow. Now a forearm there from Black. As Rowan is trying to fight his way out of this one. Irish whip reversal. Big boot delivered to Black. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Power bomb. Oh my, it's over. Two. Blow. Yeah, baby. Look. Look. 24-7. Triple threat tr match tonight. Yeah, man. That's what I'm talking about. An actual triple threat 24-7 championship match. Are we officially starting to turn it into the lower mid-card championship? Are we actually going to have match? Oh, Black Mass! Black Mass! Rowan is still on his feet? No way. Black now. Second black mass. Good night, Rowan. One, two, three. Black beats Rowan. Wow. Cool, man. Cool, 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 cool. That was everything that it needed to be. I, I, I didn't need anything more than that for that matchup. Like, yeah, a bit of a distraction there in that match where he turns around into the Black Mass and then maybe it takes a second one to put him away would have been cool just to set up the next kind of feud for Rowan. But, I mean, that's just me cherry-picking and nitpicking things. Not cherry-picking. Just nitpicking things. Um, that's all. Yeah, that was that was a fine, fine match. Let me quickly adjust the results right here. So, it will say now that Aleister Black has defeated... Eric Rowan. There we go. Do I have an idea what the main event is? Let me take a quick look on my uh, results tab here because I don't really know. We do have Rusev and Humberto Carrillo versus Bobby Lashley and Angel Garza. I'd be surprised if that was the main event. I bet you Seth Rollins holding a sermon is either going to happen at the turn of the 9 o'clock hour or at the turn of the 10 o'clock hour. There's going to be a Becky Lynch probably backstage vignette or something like that regarding Shayna Baszler. Or Becky Lynch does come down to the ring. I, I don't know which one it's going to be. We're not going to get Matt Hardy versus Randy Orton in a no-holds-barred match anymore. So I don't know what that's going to be. Uh, right now, guys, I honestly don't have a damn clue what the main event could be. Not a clue. Does anybody else have a clue? Vamal says, I never gave him any chances. Dude, I gave you 627 chances or something like that. You've made over 500 accounts. If you cannot understand why, I do not want to give you any more, considering how you've acted since I gave you that one chance where you got banned 10 minutes after I gave you that chance, then you might understand. Like, I... I... Thanks for the two bucks, man. <clears throat> I don't know how many times I have to say it, though. You, you did it to yourself. It wasn't me. It was you. Uh, I don't care if you donated, Vamal. You can't buy... You can't treat people like crap for so long and then just drop three bucks or something and say, Hey, everything's cool because I donated. Take your two bucks back, man. I don't give two craps if you drop two bucks. You spam for hours and 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 made accounts, 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 forever. For, since like middle of last year. I, you're annoying. I'm sorry, you're annoying. You're so annoying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the sad part is I don't think Vimal has ever missed a stream. If he just acted normal, he would uh, probably be loved in the chat. That's the sad part. He probably would be. 
Anyways, guys, sorry to annoy the uh, the rest of the chat with that. It is what it is. If you have not done so, though, guys, please make sure you leave a like on this video. Also, making sure you are subscribed to the channel. It'd be great to see your name pop up there on the top left-hand corner. We're going to roll a couple ads. And let's get this off here. Um, I don't know how many times I've gotten the Mr. Beast honey ad on YouTube, but all I gotta say is Mr. Beast, uh, if you just wanna showcase your face more so on my YouTube channel, hey oh, um, sure, just bring those ad dollars with you. <laughs> but yeah, uh, honey on my, uh, YouTube channel, I get those ads all the time. Javier Santana, that's actually a pretty good one. I'm going to read it out loud. Guys, I'm, I'm not taking any offense to this, so don't pile it on him whatsoever because I know how our chat can get. Javier Santana saying, Conman calling someone annoying is like Lana saying that someone can't wrestle. I, I, I will respect that. I will respect that. I can promise you I am annoying AF. But I have a great time doing my job, and I love doing it. <laughs> Um, how is the Bella Twins in the Hall of Fame before Kane, The Rock, and The Dead Man? Simple. They're retired. Kane just showed up earlier this year. The Rock is probably going to wrestle some more matches in the future. Uh, Undertaker is still set to go at WrestleMania this year. They're, they're, all, they're all still currently not retired. You can't go into the... Well, you're not supposed to go into the Hall of Fame until you're retired. I believe Ric Flair is one of the few exceptions there's been. But here is Charlotte Flair. Shane Houston says, Ricochet scheduled to beat Lesnar at Super Showdown? Don't believe it. They're trying to set up McIntyre as a babyface to beat Lesnar at Mania. What do you think, Con? Absolutely. They're they're really going with McIntyre to defeat Lesnar at WrestleMania. That's 100% the goal. They want to strap that rocket onto McIntyre, similar to how they strapped the rocket onto Seth Rollins last year. The Seth Rollins project failed uh, a year after his rocket got strapped to him. He has turned heel sort of deal. McIntyre, his time is now. He's the babyface of the future, and I think he's got... The thing is that he has, he just had, like, I know Seth Rollins was relatively believable be, beating Rick, or, blah, 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 relatively believable beating Brock Lesnar, but you know who's really believable in beating Brock Lesnar is Drew McIntyre. Here is Charlotte Flair. I want us all right now to dig down deep collectively and let off our biggest woo. So everybody right now with me, give up your biggest Woo! So last night I was in Portland. NXT TakeOver Portland, to be exact. Let's take a look. Well, this was last night streaming live on the Okay, so this was last night. We got ourselves a two dollar dono. Wally he just says, Where do you have Where do you have any to go to at Conman167? Where do you have any to go to? Where do you have any to go to? I, I'm not misreading that, right? Where do you have any to go to? I don't know what you're asking, Waleed. I have no idea what you're asking, buddy. Uh, thanks for your $2, but I have no idea what it is you're saying, my friend. Sorry. Oh, boy. Are you guys excited for uh, Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania? Are you excited? Yes or no in the chat. Some people say yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people saying no. Okay. Back here to Charlotte Flair. Majority yes, some no's. Personally, I am. I think it'll be good. Do you want to know why they chant NXT? 
That's what I thought. So last night I went to NXT Portland because I wanted to see who was filling Rhea Ripley's head with the idea that she could come on Monday Night Raw and challenge the Queen. Not sure exactly where it's from tonight, so Wally. I got there, and I was impressed. And then I started to reminisce. I thought about NXT training in a warehouse. I thought about the challenges. I thought about the growing pains. And then I thought about my class who built the foundation of what is yeah. now a third brand called NXT. Yeah. That's the truth. That's when I started so watching NXT. This is what's bothering me. The well, entitlement. It is because of women like Rhea Ripley who didn't scratch, who didn't claw, who didn't fall down as many times as I did to gain and earn the respect that NXT has now. Wow. And Rhea Ripley, you have the audacity to step in my ring on my show and hold up the title that I put on the map? Oh. Rhea, I think you're good. I think you are very good. But there is a saying. To be the man? Pride comes oh. before the fall. And I'm going to humble you at WrestleMania. Wow. And everyone is the next big thing. Until they're not. Woo! Wow. Ho, ho, ho. That was awesome. Oh, that was great. That was great. Yep, that was great. Everyone's the next big thing. Until they're not. Woo! Yo, how can you not love those lines from Charlotte Flair? How can you not love those lines, man? Oh, she so good. So good. It's again, it's promos like that, guys. That when I hear people bad mouthing Charlotte Flair, when I hear people say that she doesn't deserve it, she doesn't deserve this, she doesn't deserve that, she Yaddy freaking yada. She is the best women's superstar in the history of the WWE. I I can I can say that I, I can almost say that fully wholeheartedly confident. I, I I really do believe it. I think she's the greatest of all time in terms of the women superstars. I really I think I'm every time that I see that see her enter the ring. It's tough to argue, and it's okay that it's my opinion, guys, and it's okay if you if you have a different opinion, you know? It absolutely is okay. Wrestling is subjective. Please do not be mad at me for having an opinion because I'm not going to be mad at you for having a different opinion, but I truly believe that, and I look up and down the roster from the, from the past till now. And I and I I'm, I'm having a tough time putting more big match feels in front of me. Don't get me wrong. Love Trish Stratus and for a long time Trish Stratus was my favorite women's wrestler for a long time. She is far better than Becky Lynch. Let's not even get close to that. Becky Lynch just came along. She is still technically a flash in the pan right now. I know she has reached new levels, but Charlotte Flair has been there. She's already been there. She's a 10-time women's champion. Um I I like Tris, Trish, and I like what she brought to the table. I really do. I'm going to sit here and say Charlotte Flair has been able to... Been able to transcend the women's division in more ways than Trish. In, in many ways more than Trish Stratus. Trish Stratus stood out in a time of where wrestlers were not... Or female wrestlers were not taken all that seriously. She stood out. Charlotte Flair stood out above all the rest of the wrestlers... When wrestler or when female wrestlers were being taken seriously, there's the difference for me. Trish Stratus stood out. 
Charlotte Flair stood above. And that right there is the difference for me. And, and I and I and that's what makes me believe that. It's okay if we have different opinions, but that's what I believe. Right? Waleed, I'll I'll try to find your donation here, buddy. Thank you. He says, What do you think of the show so far? I like it. So far so good. Stood out as far as what? As being one of the most entertaining female performers that I have ever laid my eyes on. One of the best in-ring performers in terms of a female talent that I have seen in in terms of how they make every single move feel like a big deal. In terms of how when I'm watching the match, I truly care about the match. To me, that's Charlotte Flair. I, when I watch her matches, I care about her matches. More than I believe I've cared about any other women's matches. And that's not to say that I don't care about other women's matches. But she just has this this way of making the matches feel big. Think about her match against Sarah Logan. When she entered the ring against Sarah Logan just a, a week or two ago, whatever it was. That made Sarah Logan feel so much bigger. Didn't it? Uh, it's not me being crazy just thinking that. It, it made her seem a lot bigger. Just from being near Charlotte Flair. She didn't even win. They really are. Yeah, they really are, Roger Dodger. Uh, Colton says, if Trish Stratus would... Oh, we got the triple threat match here. If Trish Stratus would have came along this generation's with the push women got and had Ric Flair for a dad, Trish and Stratus faction would have been huge. Um, Hold up. You're forgetting a very, 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 very big part about how Trish Stratus got hired in the WWE. She got hired based off her looks. She was a model coming into the WWE. She had no wrestling experience coming into the WWE and she she developed great, you know, she pushed herself hard. She learned the sport and she cared. But you got to remember about how she got into the WWE. She got in just based off looks and that doesn't happen anymore in the WWE or not anymore, but it's not as often to happen in the WWE. You have to be a wrestler now with the good looks it seems in order to get in there. Lana's the one exception. At this moment, I'm going to say Lana is still the one exception. She came in and got signed by her looks. Um, Charles Wright dropping two bucks. How you doing, my friend? He says, hey, con man, been a while since I donated. I appreciate it, Charles Wright, the man who is always right. Thank you, my friend, for your $2 dono. Yes, and I'm not, I am definitely not trying to uh, discount what's, what Trish Stratus has done because she is massive. And again, she was my favorite female performer for a long time. Uh, going into, I would say this much, going in, oh my God, is Mojo Rawley about to retain? Oh, roll up here. Roll up. One, two, Mojo Rawley loses again. And Riddick Moss remains the 24-7 champion. Cool, cool, cool. So Mojo Rawley and R-Truth both lost that match. I knew it wasn't worth putting up there on the screen. But yeah, guys, just anyways, just to reiterate one more time, I am not taking away from what uh, what Trish Stratus has done in her career. She is awesome, and I loved her, uh, and I always will love her. You know, and I got to see her wrestle at NXT, or not NXT, sorry. I got to see her at SummerSlam this past summer. Wrestle against Charlotte Flair. That was great. I loved it. R-Truth, though, just uh, attacked Mojo Rawley, put him into the ground, and now he's going to leave with a smile on his face. So Riddick Moss with the win, and R-Truth with the attack to Mojo, and Mojo still left laying there without a title. Uh, Atlantis Gaming. Hi, Con Man. What did you think about the Johnny Gargano heel turn? Uh, I, 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 I mean, it's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to see the, uh, the show moving forward with it. But, 
I was screaming at the top of my lungs. It was something I did not see coming. I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. That Johnny Gargano turned heel on Ciampa. Like, what? My God. All right, we got ourselves a $5 tunnel. Thank you very much, Waleed. He says, new boss, and we're going to find out if you're the new boss. Let's put this in right here. So, $5 dono. Thank you very much, my friend. Burn it down. New boss. And... Yes, we do. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've got ourselves a new boss. His name is Wally D. Jazz. Thank you so much, my friend, for becoming a, I believe, two-time? Yes, two-time boss battle champion. So as of right now, everybody, if you take a look at the boss battle championships, right now, Rahul Kapar is a three-time champion. Wally D. Jazz is a two-time. Kevin Langoff is a four-time. Justin Beverly is a seven-time. Casey Rose, five-time boss battle champion. And then we got a bunch of one-timers across the board. So welcome everybody to the show. Again, if you guys would like to drop a donation, you can do so. It supports the channel, keeps the show running, and it highlights your message. Kind of cool. You also get a cool little dono gift that pops up on the screen. If you would like to know what dono gift you can get, you can always expand the description. And all the way at the bottom, there is all the amounts right there for you so that you can see what options you have. Uh, who will be the next challenger to Cole's title now, Con? That's tough. That's tough. So if I'm honestly looking at it, Challenger Nicole's title could be... Oh, wow. Hey, Waleed. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for your $20 dono. I appreciate it, my friend. Thank you very, very much. That is really, really nice of you. You dropped Reginald the pair, and he says, you are amazing. He's giving me that nice little cap, 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 cap. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Reginald the pair. So let's roll it right now. Wally he jazz dropping a 20 bomb. Thank you so much, my friend. I will get back to uh, letting you guys know who I think is going to face him. Uh, but first, we got ourselves a $20 dono. And you guys know that that is absolutely, positively, magnificently glorious. No, I won't give in. I won't give in I'm victorious. And I will defend. I will defend. So, um... I can see a few options. I can see Velveteen Dream versus Adam Cole. I can see Finn Balor versus Adam Cole. But that one's a little weird because it would be more of a heel versus heel. You would have to position somebody as a face. And I don't think you want to position Finn Balor as a face. So does that mean you start turning Adam Cole heel or face? Hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, so definitely there. You got the potential also of it being a triple threat. Tommaso Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole. Like, there's the possibility that that could happen as well. Uh, it won't be Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole. That's not the match that they're going to build to. We've already been there, done that. There would have to be something additional, and that would be Ciampa added into the match. So if I truly believe what the big-time match, the, the next feel for NXT to see what we've got, I would like to see Velveteen Dream versus Adam Cole WrestleMania weekend. I would love to see Velveteen Dream versus Adam Cole WrestleMania weekend. I think that'd be really cool. And if that was the, the culmination of putting the NXT title on Velveteen Dream and doing sort of a situation where it's sink or swim with the title, that might be a decent way to go. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the It's McIntyre. WrestleMania Drew McIntyre. So, with McIntyre, how cool would it be? Here, let me just look this up. I don't want to. I don't want to mess this up here. How cool would it be if at WrestleMania? If it if it was all quiet, everybody at WrestleMania. 
and then all of a sudden you just heard this, okay, guys? You just heard this in the background. It's all quiet at WrestleMania. You're waiting for Drew McIntyre to enter, and then you hear this. Yeah. Broken dreams. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Yes. Oh. Ready, guys? This song, this song hits. This song hits hard. Imagine this happened. Out of time. Yeah, so say goodbye. What is yours? And now is mine. And I'll be broken dreams. Here's McIntyre. I see everyone's fired up tonight. That yes, guys, that is his old thing. theme music. There's only 48 days till WrestleMania. Don't worry, Michael Mackin. I'm going to edit it out after the stream. The Don't side. worry. But Charlotte did that already, so I've got to make it more interesting. How can I make this bigger? You guys want to get on TV? You want to point at the sign with Drew McIntyre? All right, we'll use the Claymore countdown. Three, two, two one. one. Boom! <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> McIntyre's making a great baby right, face. A quick geography lesson. Told you guys. These days, Suplex City is located in Claymore country. Says it on the shirt right here. And come WrestleMania, we're invading Suplex City, demolishing that bitch to the ground, and I am leaving WWE Champion. Yeah, you are, McIntyre. Hell yeah, you Ladies are. And gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Walrus. He's here. Oh, man. Paul Heyman, <laughs> the advocate to the beast. No, no, I I'm talking about Brock Lesnar being here. Ladies oh, let's get Heyman upset this early in the night. And gentlemen My name is, is Paul Heyman. Heyman. You want the evening to get Bigger, I give you the biggest, the reigning, the Is it Brock? Undisputed WWE Heavyweight Champion of the World, Brock Lesnar. Is he heel or here? McIntyre's ready for a fight. No, he's not. No, he's not. Where is he? Brock's not here. No, he's not. He's not here. I'm sorry. Mr. McIntyre, you 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 didn't think Brock Lesnar was here tonight, did you? No, no. I, I just wanted you and the entire WWE Universe to know what it's going to sound like after the words and still after Brock Lesnar defeats Ricochet at Super Showdown and after Brock Lesnar F5s you and pins you, I can point to <laughs> WrestleMania. I can point to, Paul says. Mr. Heyman, wait just there. You Ooh. can keep saying Brock's name over and over. You can say it before the match, when you're at lunch, when you're getting manicures together. And please, say Brock Lesnar's name when he's crying because Drew McIntyre kicked his head off 
beat him at WrestleMania and took the WWE Championship. Oh, hell yeah. That'll be Drew. Mr. McIntyre, I, I, I have profound respect for you, sir, and I did not come here tonight to debate you. No, sir, I happen to be a huge admirer of your talents. But, but there is a man that, that I know who's not such an admirer of your talents. As a matter of fact, he is your opponent this evening. Oh, it's As MVP. As a matter of fact, yeah. he has a legitimate grievance with you, which he shall settle in that ring right now. So to you, Mr. McIntyre, and ladies and gentlemen, I present to you MVP. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, come on! No way! They they cut out the best part of MVP. They cut out his entrance. One, two. You hear the clock ticking. Tick, tock. You're a rock star in the making. Tick, tock. I want you to remember me. Tick, tock. But the day I don't have the memory, I'm coming! <laughs> yeah! Here's MVP. Mr. Heyman may not have an issue with you, but I do. I have a big issue with you. As an old friend, I invited you to the VIP lounge. I treated you with the respect of an elite level VIP. I mean... He wasn't even on the list. We're old friends, or so I thought. But how did you repay me? Wait, wait, I know this one. I kicked your head off. <laughs> you got jokes, right? You think you're Billy Connolly or somebody? No, what you did was hit me with a cheap shot. But I promise you, tonight I'm going to whoop you, and you're going to see it coming. It won't be a cheap shot. And I hope he claymores him right away. I hope McIntyre... Oh, there's a cheap oh, shot with the microphone from MVP. Yeah, and talk MVP? about a cheap shot. Come on, McIntyre. Just bounce out of the corner and hit him with a Claymore. Oh, big boot from MVP. Wow. Referee, ring that bell. Referee, ring the bell. Come on, McIntyre. Just Claymore his head right off right away. Just Claymore his head off right away. Referee, rings that bell. McIntyre with a boot! <laughs> That's what I like to see. McIntyre. Oh! Ripping the little nose thing off the breathing strip of MVP. And that's not what you want to do to McIntyre. Because McIntyre is enraged. Here, and I think it's not... It, there's no point in even putting a Twitter poll here, guys. No point in even putting the Twitter poll because this thing's going to be over before it even begins. Back elbow there from MVP. MVP out of the corner. Here he goes. Future Shock DDT. And a kip up as well. Everybody, I want you to count down with me, okay? McIntyre's going to start it. We're going to follow through with it. Say it with me. I don't know what this is right now. Apparently, this is me hyping up the three. Sure. Ready? Three, two, one. Claymore! Stares at the WrestleMania sign, and this could be the sight in front of a thousand some odd people. I know there's more than a thousand people, but McIntyre winning the match and becoming the WWE. Uh, yeah, WWE champion. It's about called him Universal Champ. Cool. That was cool. Drew McIntyre is operating on a different level. I look around over my shoulder and I notice Paul Heyman is uh, the building. Good idea. That was awesome, guys. That was really, 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 really fun, to be 100% honest. Colton Starman says, How many Claymores to beat Brock? Three. Three. 
three claymores. I'm going to say it takes three claymores to beat Brock. I don't think he kicks out on the third one. I think they really want to put over McIntyre as a strong, strong opponent. And here's the thing. You can have everybody... So when you see the finisher hit for the first time, everybody is expecting in a big match, that's a finisher that people kick out of, right? In 2020, in a big time matchup, when a finisher gets hit for the first time, you believe that the match is still going to go on. You might buy into the finish, but you don't really believe it's the finish of the match. When the second finisher happens, you believe a lot more that it's going to happen, that, that that's going to be the end of the matchup, right? Because it feels like that should be the end. But when somebody kicks out of that second finisher, usually what that means is that the third time they go for that finishing move, something massive has to happen. There has to be something out of nowhere, some sort of over-the-top move, that like a super RKO or a super attitude adjustment or whatever. Or like, you know, the, the yes lock with a kendo stick. Or just little things like that that make your move feel like it is bigger than it normally is and I wonder how they could pull that off with Claymore kick so question is guys how would you pull off a unique Claymore boot yes you can do things out of no out of nowhere and I can dream right now but this won't happen like what would be amazing guys what would be amazing is if for whatever reason Brock Lesnar tried to go for that shooting star press and McIntyre Claymore booted him out of midair Think about how cool that would be if Brock Lesnar goes for the shooting star press again and then just a Claymore boot out of midair. Oh, that would be like one of the most epic ends to a show that you could have, you could ever see. Be so great. Abdi Sabri, thank you very much, my friend. Exactly, that's the stuff you see in 2K. Be awesome. Be great. I know it won't happen. It's too dangerous of a move to pull off, but it'd be amazing if they did. Well, here's the thing, XDD, Sean. Uh, Brock Lesnar hit the uh, the shooting star press a ton of the time down in OVW. You know, so I don't blame Brock for going for it at WrestleMania. Why wouldn't you dig into your bag of tricks at Mania? It's just unfortunate that he, he really screwed it up when he did it. He didn't uh, rotate far enough. But at the end of the day, it created an amazing WrestleMania moment, one that people can look back on for years and years and years to come. We got ourselves a $5 dono. Thank you, Kevin Langoff. He says, if Brock could take a Claymore, how many... Oh, if Brock could take a Claymore, how many Claymores would Brock take if Brock takes a Claymore? Riddle does it better than me. You think? <laughs> uh, thank you, my friend, for your $5 dono. I appreciate it, buddy. I really do, Kevin. Thank you. But remember also, everybody, if you are enjoying the show, you too can drop a little dono. It doesn't matter how much or how little any little bit is appreciated. If Brock could take a Claymore, how many Claymores would Brock take if Brock takes a Claymore? Riddle does it better than me. All right. We'll see there, Colton. We will definitely see. Steve Taylor says, Brock used to do it all the time. He said someone told him that it was too dangerous and he had actually stopped using it, but someone wanted him to pull it out for Mania again. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cody Begg, he had a, uh, a child l in 2019, a little baby. And uh, as obviously that child begins to grow, his family life becomes even more important. Cody Bag has popped in still. I believe he popped into a stream just last week. Um, but, you know, his outside life is uh, kind of pulled him away from the stream chat, which is fair. I totally understand it. Totally, totally understand it. Very happy for Cody. Very happy. Have you guys been watching the uh, the Ruthless Aggression documentaries on the, U or the WWE Network? If you haven't, it's worth it. 100% worth it. I've seen both of them so far. Uh, the John Cena one, to be quite honest. Actually, you know what? Let's talk about this for a little bit, guys. I haven't talked about it yet. 
overall, I think that WWE made a good documentary, not great, uh, regarding the Ruthless Aggression era. You know, it, it feels very, very, very much like the Monday Night Wars series that they produced a, a, a few years back. And that series was excellent. That was actually one of the best series I've ever seen on the WWE Network. It very informative, and same with this Ruthless Aggression one. It's very informative, but I will say this. WWE is uh, very good at rewriting history and not saying what actually happened. The, the fact that, like, just little tiny little things in the documentary just made you kind of roll your eyes. That you're like, oh, you're taking credit for that? Because, guys... If you haven't seen the documentary, you're going to laugh at hearing this. WWE took credit for changing their logo from WWEF to WWE. WWF to WWE. There was zero mention of the fact that the World Wildlife... What, what is it? World Wildlife Foundation or something like that sued them to change their name? Um... Hello, hello, WWE, are you idiots? You got sued. I don't know what that was. <laughs> um, still, weird that they didn't announce that like uh, around the time that that happened. Like, come on, be real. So there was a few other things that uh, were said that I kind of rolled my eyes at. Bruce Pritchard. Bruce Pritchard. He comes across as an ass kisser. I like Bruce Pritchard's pod podcast. I think he is uh, very knowledgeable and has a lot of good views about the the way that wrestling worked back in the days. But my God, he when I was watching that, he let off the vibe of that everything that they did, they meant to do. That they meant to do all these things. That they meant to pick this thing. That they meant to do this. That they meant to do that. And it's just kind of like, what? You didn't mean to do that. You can't sit there and say that you you meant for John Cena to uh, to go out there and get over on that first night with Kurt Angle. You you can't you can't sit there and say that. N no. <laughs> he, he was the only one available backstage, like they said. Yet Bruce Pritchard took credit for it? Ah! <laughs> well, and that kind of was just like, what in the world? So there's a few things. The John Cena one was cool. Um, the first one was also decent. I'm excited to see more. Mr. Ford. Yeah. Oh my God. I forgot that he said that. Mr. Ford, guys, if you can't see it in the chat, Mr. Ford said, let's not forget, Pritchard said, Brian winning at Mania was the plan the whole time. That, I re oh, I forgot all about that quote. That just says everything that needs to be said about how the people write in the WWE. They are A-OK -okay taking credit for something that the fans forced their hand for and basically say, oh, we were geniuses. This was the plan all the time. We just, we worked the crowd into loving us. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, 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 you didn't. <laughs> Come on, get over yourself. How you doing there, Karina? Welcome to the stream, buddy. Here's Becky Lynch, everybody. Things over the last week. I, uh, I, I'll try I to find it for you, Brandon K. Okay? I'll look for it while this segment's going here. And fortune and what I learned was, I've I've no use for fame, but I did figure out what to do with fortune. Oh, Becky's got money in the money. Becky's got money. Wow, I want that. WWE. This is me paying my fine up front for what I'm gonna do when I cross paths with Shayna Baszler next. Okay. Consider this, consider this a down payment on violence. 
You can take more if you want. Take every penny that I have. Because I'm telling you now, bad things are going to happen when I find her. Because only, only animals go for the neck. And when they do, he was it in is TNA at that weaken time. Weaken their prey before they end up. Now, Shayna. So maybe it wasn't Pritchard Shana, that said it then. Who who said it? Because that was definitely a thing that was said. I can guarantee that. Who was it then? If it wasn't Pritchard, because if you're saying he was in TNA at that do, time, then it wasn't wouldn't I have been look Pritchard, right? Like prey to you? Who was it? No, I have if it wasn't Pritchard. Through a murderer's row of champions and former champions. Natalia, Oscar, Charlotte, Sasha, No, it wasn't Meltzer. Ronda, At least I'm not, I don't think it was Meltzer. There's no reason why more. Meltzer would know. And I cut them all down because I felt I hmm. had to. I am coming after you because I want to. Huh. Becky! <laughs> Becky, Becky, Becky. Oh, here's Shayna. Look at you. Lugging a bag of your hard-earned cash around for something that you're never going to get to do. Let me tell you how this is really going to happen. I'm in the Women's Elimination Chamber match. The winner of that match gets to face you at WrestleMania. The Elimination Chamber match is held in a cage. You know where I came from? I'm a cage fighter. Everything about this is laid out perfectly for me to be the one that takes your title at WrestleMania. So, I'm going to chew through every other competitor in that cage. And you know better than anyone that I'm willing to do that. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I didn't plan to do that last week, I just did it. But imagine the things that I do have planned. Becky. Oh boy. I'm going to tear the living shit out of you. Oh, she said a swear. She said a swear. Okay. Elimination chamber, you say. Thanks for letting me know. I'll be watching closely and rooting for you. Okay. Right, no doubt Becky Lynch is going to be rooting for Shayna Baszler, but can Becky handle that mad woman? That, that's the thing. For those of you who don't know, Shayna Baszler said a swear. Made my mouth drop. Aren't we all just giant children? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, uh, that was cool. That was cool. Nah, Shayna's not going to be in trouble, guys. They let it air perfectly. They let Corey Graves do it a while ago. They did it for shock value. Here's Alina Vega and Alberto Carrillo. No, that's not him. That's Angel Garza. Yeah, just a quick question for you. I was really just curious how this tag team match against Alberto Carrillo and Rusev came about. Well, actually, Charlie, it was on Valentine's Day, and I just had this brilliant idea where what would be better than the two hottest couples teaming up against their respected enemies? It's like a Monday night double date. <gasps> brilliant. <laughs> uh, felicidades to the Lashley newlywed couple. Super happy for you guys. I'm, I'm glad that you guys are our partners tonight. I'll give you one thing. Garza and I are definitely two of the hottest couple of people here in WWE. But as I've said once, and I'll say it again, Garza and I are strictly business. Okay, no, we're not here for pleasure. We're here for business, and that is it. No, 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 don't tell me to calm down. This is all about business. It's all about money, okay? What are you going to say? Kepa, easy, calm down. Nothing Everyone down. knows how beautiful you are. But I'm here just for your business acumen. What? And besides, there is no woman can tie down these ladies, man. And as my cousin Umberto Carrillo is this close, yeah, this close to find out that no man can measure up to me. 
Okay. All right. All right. So Rusev is here. Let me see. Yes, it is. We do have this matchup here. Okay, everybody. So Rusev and Humberto Carrillo versus Bobby Lashley and Angel Garza. This should be interesting. Um... Yeah, I, the whole Bobby Lashley thing I'm over with, you know, I think personally, oh my goodness, I personally, guys, I do believe that uh, they missed the mark here with the match against Brock Lesnar at Super Showdown. I'm, yeah, you know, I, I'm still going to say it right now. Bobby Lashley is all of a sudden stuck in limbo. He is. You know, Bobby Lashley stuck in limbo. He lost a triple threat number one contenders match. Got pinned in the process. You're, you're, you had the ability to make a quote-unquote dream match of Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley happen at a show that not a lot of people care about. With Super Showdown, it would draw lots of numbers. Uh, I get it. You're trying to promote Ricochet, and obviously he's a really fun talent, but... Personally, I think Brock Lesnar should have went up against Bobby Lashley at the pay-per-view. That should have been the way that they went with it. Because then also think about it. After the pay-per-view, you can have Drew McIntyre run through Bobby Lashley in a little bit of a feud to build up him, show that he can beat him as well, lead up to the Brock Lesnar match a little more. It should have been that match. The Ricochet one, I get they were trying to build that storyline too, and good for WWE sticking with their uh, storylines. But man, that's that was just still a missed opportunity. It still is. Uh, I don't know how what, how else to say it. You know, I don't know if you're ever gonna find a more opportune time with somebody who is disliked right now, who's got momentum, who is just coming out of a massive angle in the WWE like Bobby Lashley, against a guy like Brock Lesnar. Like honestly, that. I don't mean to sit here and, and complain about it, and I know it's done and over with and that we are getting Ricochet, and I'm happy that we're going to see Ricochet versus Brock because that is going to be a fun match. But I don't think Ricochet was there yet. I don't think Ricochet was anywhere near ready to take on that title match, and I don't think it was, to be quite honest, anybody in the wrestling world was pushing for that to be the match at this time in Saudi Arabia. Sure, in the future, but now felt a little weird anyways we got ourselves a two dollar dono from wally he he says the crowd is so low tonight i know they are a little quiet this week aren't they last week was a great crowd this week is a little on the quiet side anyways guys we're gonna roll a couple of ads right now and remember, if you are enjoying the show, please make sure you leave a like on this video. Also, making sure you are subscribed to the channel. Would love to see your name pop up there. And also, everybody, if you are really enjoying the show, you can always all drop a little donation. It doesn't matter how much or how little. Just click on that Super Chat feature right there, and it is greatly appreciated. This program is aggressive in nature. It may contain... Tony says, you know what happened? WWE got caught too, or got too caught up in signing big names. Now there isn't enough TV time to showcase these big names, only to keep beating other companies versus building the talent they already had. Majority of the crowd. Uh, is that true? Is that true? I'm trying to think. Because if I go through who are the stars that are on their program that they have signed, you know? If we're, if we're going back within the last five years... Black has been signed and he's heavily featured on uh, on Monday Night Raw right now. Was Balor signed within the last five years? Yeah. Lashley was signed within the last five years again. Um, I, I re I'm really trying to remember here, guys. Uh, who all has come to the WWE within the last little bit? Who is big names? Who are big names? Drew McIntyre signed within the last uh, few years sort of deal. There has been a lot of signings, haven't there? AJ Styles, yeah. 
Yeah, you're right, man. You're right. They have focused heavily on signing big talents. Balor, yeah, Finn Balor was a big one. Kevin Owens, I don't know when he signed. I don't think he's he's there. The Undisputed Era, yeah, that's actually a massive one. Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish. Massive one. All right, let me ask you really quickly here. Who will win? Bobby Roode? Yeah, there you go. Hashtag Raw. Samoa Joe? Yeah, frig, man. The, the roster's filled with people that they just signed over the last few years. And here's the thing. If they maybe would have spent the time building up their own stars, yeah, maybe they would have been here. But also at the same time, their own stars have not amounted to too much. The ones that they have built up have done fine. The other ones really haven't been allowed to do much here. Nakamura, yeah. Frick, guys, there's so many signings, hasn't there been? So, it's going to be Angel Garza and Lashley. Or will it be Humberto and Rusev? There we go, guys. Twitter.com slash Conman167. Let me know in the poll who you guys think is going to win. James Parker Reigns is asking me what is next for The Undertaker? Ooh, good question. Uh, I've heard lots of rumors of AJ Styles versus Undertaker at WrestleMania, and I understand why WWE might want to go in that direction. It allows Undertaker to be in there with somebody who is really, really well respected in the business, like AJ Styles is, who is incredibly safe in the ring as well and is gonna probably be able to get a good match out of him. Oh, ripping the pants off is Angel Garza, throws it right at Rusev. See, little things like that is what's gonna get Angel Garza over as the main roster superstar, and he's definitely, oh my God, a kiss on the cheek. Suicide dive there from Humberto Carrillo, and that that's gonna hit pretty hard. Kill, kill, kill. Brandon says AJ would be good with that match. He can bounce and bump around for Taker, and a loss won't hurt him. You're damn right. You are damn right, my friend. Uh, that's exactly what I'm thinking because at this point in his career, Undertaker is most likely going to win. I know it sounds weird because he is already lost at Mania. Because he's already done the job for Brock Lesnar. Because he's already lost to Roman Reigns and did the job for him. It feels like if he's facing AJ Styles, that AJ Styles would do the job for Undertaker. To allow the dead man to have another big moment. And if that is the end of the Undertaker... like I know we were talking about this a few days ago. How important it is that when legends go out of the business, that they go out on their back. That they put over another superstar. The thing is, Taker's done that. You know, Taker isn't a full-time performer anymore. So it's not as important for Undertaker at this point in his career to come back and put over another superstar. As long as that superstar is already made. Okay? Think about it. If Undertaker was going in there against Aleister Black, or The Fiend, or... Whatever. <laughs> if he went in there against Aleister Black or The Fiend, those are the two that come to mind. If he went in there against them, it would be advantageous for Undertaker to go out on his back. But I can't say the same thing if it's AJ Styles that he faces or if he faces another superstar that he's really o that is already really over. You know, uh, so AJ Styles probably does the job to Undertaker at Mania. Styles doesn't need to be put over anymore. AJ Styles understands how the business works. I mean, the dude is a legend in his own right. Guaranteed WWE Hall of Famer. He doesn't have anything left to prove, so he might let The Undertaker go over. He, he, Undertaker might want to go over. He might not want to. He might say AJ Styles is going over. But regardless, it's going to be an entertaining match if that's the match we get. Colton Starman says everyone's forgetting Sting was cleared. 
Let me Everyone just do some Googling here. You should try Trivago next time. Hotel, Trivago. Welcome to Monday Night Raw. So on February 5th, 2020, the newest rumor surrounding Sting and a potential return claims WWE doctors have cleared him, but he's not interested in competing, not interested in competing at Super Showdown. The word retirement doesn't tend to mean the same thing to wrestlers as it does to other walks of life. Ah, yada, yada, yada. Let's see some more. So that was from the Sportster. Uh, okay. So he's cleared. He's cleared. Program is aggressive in nature. It may contain themes that are not suitable hmm. for everyone. Viewer hmm. discretion. Trying to think if that would be wise in 2020. We are back live on Monday Night Raw. It is a rumor, you know, and I do tend to avoid reporting on rumors, right? Because you can't report on rumors. They're just that rumors. They don't mean anything that. A rumor, a rumor, a rumor. Even if he is cleared by WWE doctors, I, I'm pretty sure that Sting was... He did say the only match that he would come out of retirement for would be one versus The Undertaker. But, like, at this point in their careers, guys, is it really something that we would want to see? You know, a... I'm trying to think of the match that we would witness, and let's let's think about the last time that we saw Shawn Michaels and uh, and uh, Triple H wrestle, right? That tag team match in Saudi Arabia, that that kind of ruined the taste of Shawn Michaels, right? Money talks, I know, but like, it sucks that that was his one off re like return. Anyways, I'm just nitpicking here tonight. The match that we have at hand is uh, solid, not great. So apparently John Cena might be engaged. Neat. With uh, Shay Shari Tzadeh. No idea who that is. Nice clothesline in the corner from Rusev. Overhead belly-to-belly -belly throw there to Angel Garza. Garza's in a little bit of trouble. Count of one, count of two, but broken up slash kick out from Garza. And Bobby Lashley tried to break it up as well. Now some right hands into the corner. Rusev's firing them over and over and over again. Roll up. Roll up. One, two, kick out by Rusev. Ducks underneath the match got kicked. So Super kick lays out Ruru into the cover. Count of two broken up by Humberto Carrillo. Now off the ropes. Angel Garza hangs on. Up and over. Thanks, Walid. I appreciate it, buddy, for the $10 dono. Here he goes, Garza. What a leap through from Humberto. Off the ropes goes Carrillo. Leaps over, takes him down. Very solid in ring performance. Oh, what a spear from Lashley. Rusev with a clothesline. <laughs> That's what I like to see. Thank you, Waleed. So he says, guess who got their WrestleMania tickets today? Dude. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I'm mad jealous. I'm jealous, jealous. Rusev goes all the way up top. Into Gurry. From Angel Garza catches him right there. Now up to the top rope. Angel Garza is going to go flying. Uh-oh, everyone. Angel Garza. Flipped down by Rusev. Now Rusev has him all the way up to the top rope. Rusev leaps. Drops a headbutt. Man, you don't see Rusev go there very often. Into the cover. Count of two. Kick out by Garza. Woo! Dan it. Dan it. Dan it. Dan it. All hail. Bow down to the, bow down to the king. Crash. Stomp to the back of Garza. Garza rolls through the accolade though. Super kick, or sorry, a kick just to the midsection. Not quite a super kick. Has him up. Lashley. Oh, what a much got kick catches Lashley there. Roll up though, into the cover, count of one, count of two, he has the tights, count of three, Angel Garza wins again. 
He la, he cheat, he steal, and he picks up a win over Rusev. Angel Garza. Come on, what? Rusev. Rusev, why are you attacking Angel Garza? Okay. Okay. Um. Can I ask you guys something there? What's the point of Rusev right now? What's the point of Rusev right now, right? I can't figure out what the point of Rusev is at, at this moment. He has nothing going for him. Right? Like, how do you take a... Put it this way. How do you take a storyline that got the fans behind him? How do you... First of all, how do you take the wife of him away? How do you have her cheat on him in front of him? How do you build all that up and not have him win the feud? and move him forward as a really effective babyface. Like... They've got nothing going for Rusev. And for a guy who is incredibly over with the fans, you just would think that they would protect him a little bit more? Just not have him lose to a roll-up of Angel Garza in a throwaway tag team match. Little things like that, right? It's little things that... How you perceive them. A lot of people in the WWE... I understand that Rusev might have been putting the, doing the job to get Garza over, right? And I know there was a distraction. He super kicked Lashley. I, I get it. I get it. But... What else is it? You guys are saying he's in he's in contract limbo, but the thing is, if if they put it, not even if they just pushed him, if they gave him logical stuff to sink his teeth in that he can truly get behind, then he wouldn't be in contract limbo. He would sign with you. He would he would want to stick around your company. That's the things that I have a trouble, a, a trouble understanding within the WWE is that when you have superstars that are incredibly over, like Rusev is, that have the fans cheering for them in the live arenas, willing to pay to go see, and then you just don't, you don't hit the push button at the right time. You give the win to the wrong person, and I know wins and losses don't truly matter, but how you follow up feuds do matter. How you follow it up with a push is how it matters. You know, you can... Here's my best example to you guys. When AJ Styles came into the WWE and faced Chris Jericho at WrestleMania, AJ Styles lost. He lost his first Mania match. He lost his first WrestleMania match. But the night after, he challenged Roman Reigns and entered into a program with him for the WWE title. And that loss was erased. Because at that point, it doesn't matter because it's how you follow things up. That's the important part. It does not matter the result of the match. It's how you follow it up. And that is what creates superstars. That is what creates memorable storylines. And WWE has just been leaving Rusev off to the side. They, tr they feature him, but they feature him with crap. And that's how it's always been with Rusev. I wonder who you're saying not true to. If you're saying not true to me, I don't know what it is you disagree on. So Unbroken says, There's plenty of room to run certain wrestlers every two weeks and keep a progressive storyline. They are stuck in a simply weekly thinking. Treat it like a TV show with reoccurring stories. Reoccurring stories. 
Yeah, I think that's kind of what I was saying, right? Maybe you're saying to somebody else. I don't know. Hey, Miguel, how you doing, my friend? Welcome to the stream, buddy. People say Rusev just needs to go and leave and wrestle somewhere else. And I understand that that is an easy way to create hype around yourself. But you want to know who also did that, guys? Sean Spears. Look. I I like Ty Dillinger, you know? I liked him when he was in WWE. Sean Spears in AEW is what it is. But the thing is, it's not a guarantee that if you are popular in the WWE that you go somewhere else and that you are going to get over, that you're going to be featured more, that you're going to be pushed more. It's not a guarantee. You know, sometimes leaving a company hurts you, right? And yeah, Rusev would get a giant pop for showing up in any other company. It's just a pop. It's how you follow it up, right? Is he going to be excellent? I mean, yeah, he could... You know what? Rusev's one of those performers that he could go to AEW and he would light it up over there. He would be excellent over there. But that's not to say that if WWE greenlights a big push in WWE that he wouldn't be excellent in WWE either. Right? All it takes is for WWE to say, hey, here you go. Run with it. And he would. It just He just needs an opportunity, a true opportunity. And he's yet to get that in WWE. Uh, Hunter, or, well, he had it at the start of his career. He doesn't have it anymore. Hunter Hand says, Khan, you know how I said they're saving Kari? This is the setup for Kabuki Warriors versus Divas of Doom. You might be right, Hunter Hand. You might be right. That's that promo. Uh, could I ever see John Cena versus Keith Lee? Yeah. Dude, I would have that at this year's WrestleMania if they wanted. That would be like... That'd be awesome. <laughs> Alright, so... Who will win is the question mark. Hashtag raw. So it's either going to be Kai Ri Sane or it's going to be Natalia. So just for everybody out there, uh, I know that there's a lot of fans of Kari Sane, a lot of fans of Kairi and want her to be in the elimination chamber. I completely understand why Kari Sane is not in the chamber. Simply because she was recently concussed. If she has no chance of winning, why why risk your performer at that point when you know she's not going to win? Right? And here's the thing. If Kyrie goes into it, she's not going to be able to be a powerhouse in it. She would be tossed off of everything. She would be thrown down on the steel. She'd be thrown into things. She'd be thrown off the pods. Everything. That would be Kyrie Sane's job in the match. And that's just... She's not at the point in her career where... Where one, she's ready for an Elimination Chamber match. And two, she's uh, she might be cleared by doctors, but there's no need to put her in that risk at this point. Not right now. I do like the idea of doing the Kabuki Warriors versus the Divas of Doom at WrestleMania, though. Versus Natalia and Beth Phoenix. I, I like that one. One, two, kick out by Natalia. Yes, she could. Oh, 
Hey, Ashton, how you doing, buddy? Welcome to the stream, my friend. Uh, Charles Speedo is asking me, why haven't I streamed NXT UK? Good question, my friend. I have streamed it a while, a while, a while ago. I want to say when it first started airing on the WWE Network. I stopped streaming that, and I, then I started streaming what is called the Con Man Universe. Right at the same time that NXT UK airs. That's why I don't stream it. Um, if I didn't run the Con Man Universe, if I didn't put as much time as I did into that series, I would probably stream NXT UK during the day. I would also probably stream everything else <laughs> sort of deal. Uh, the Con Man Universe does take up a lot, a lot, a lot of time. So that's the reason why I don't uh, stream NXT UK. Keith Lee versus Big Show. Dream match? Question mark. Um, sure. Is it, is it a dream match or is it just a match we'd like to see? I don't see myself paying money for that match. At least not right now. I do see myself wanting to watch it, but would I pay hard-earned money to see it? Probably not. Be a cool match on Monday Night Raw for sure. Uh, Kevin Langhoff, how you doing, my friend? He says, we are actually probably going to get Asuka versus Shayna for the first time inside the chamber. It will be good. You know what, dude? I'm thinking that we're going to get down to the final two, and it's going to be Asuka and Shayna Baszler staring each other down. We got a cool matchup between them before uh, Shayna Baszler picks up the win. Also, you know what? I would not be surprised if Liv Morgan is the final in the final two. Like, Liv Morgan gets a uh, shock victory over Asuka, let's say in order to get down to the final two, and it's just Shayna versus Liv Morgan. And then Liv Morgan tries real hard before Shayna Baszler picks up the win. That's kind of what I would say is going to happen along those lines, but I could be wrong. We are actually probably Asuka's about to get an infer- No. Shayna for the first time in the chamber. Kari Sane from behind? Right hand lays down Natalia. Referee turns his back. I think Oscar's gonna try to get involved here. Oscar with a kick to the side of the head of Natalia. <laughs> Saying count it. Two. So the referee's count has begun here, guys, in the ring. Count of five. Count of six. No way, is this going to end in a count out? Count of eight. Count of nine. Count of ten. Wow, it's over. Kari Sane wins via count out. So the Kabuki Warriors pick up the win. The tag team champions of the women's division. The Kabuki Warriors. Kari Sane and Asuka just having the time of their life. Uh, yeah, so Hunter Hand, dude, I think you're absolutely right, my friend. This is leading to a Divas of Doom versus Kabuki Warrior match at WrestleMania. Yes, it is. Do I think a woman's mid-card title would be good on the main roster? See, here's the thing. I'd say yes. But at the same time, WWE has... A lot of troubles just booking even the women's tag team division, let alone trying to add in a secondary title for the women's division. I think it would just make too much of a logjam, and as a result, nobody would truly get over. Because they would not be featured enough on TV. People wouldn't care. They would drop the title before people truly cared. That's another thing that bugs me about WWE. When they have people go on like these three, four month title reigns and say, okay, it's time to drop the championship because you've done nothing. Yet they don't feature them on TV besides like a couple times throughout the four months. It's like, what do you expect is going to happen? If you don't feature people on TV, they're not going to get over. If you don't put them out on the screens, if you don't put them in matches, they will not get over. Like the Iconics. The Iconics were great every time they stepped foot into the ring, but how often do they let them defend the tag titles? Zilch, zero. Barely ever. And once they did defend them, they lost them. Uh, talk about Sasha Banks and Bayley. They had the rules that they were going to defend it in NXT, in Raw, and SmackDown, but then WWE didn't let them. They didn't let them defend the titles everywhere. Three 
Uh, cake underscore. Thank you very much for subscribing, my friend. Welcome to the channel. Do you think Becky will cost Shayna her opportunity in the chamber match? No. No, I don't believe so. I believe that is the way that they get to the WrestleMania match between Becky Lynch and Shayna Baszler. No, they, that doesn't happen, in my opinion. Uh, should NXT display matches at WrestleMania? That's tough to say as well. You, you know what? Honestly, yes, they should. And I think... I think that's what they're going to do with Shayna Baszler, or sorry, not Shayna Baszler, with Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair, and probably Becky Lynch versus Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler still had the NXT tag beside her name, right, earlier in the night. So they got some matches from NXT on the main roster card for WrestleMania, but you also have to remember they've got their own show that they have to fill the night before. Uh, take over Tampa, right? That's where Adam Cole, uh, Keith Lee, the Bros are weights, everybody like that is going to be wrestling. Oh yeah, I don't promote it enough. Thanks, Steve. So yeah, everybody, if you would like to join our Discord, there is so many awesome things going on in our Discord server. If you like chatting with the people here in the live chat, well, all those people are featured over in the Discord server as well. So make sure, guys, if you are interested in that, click on the link down in the description below and join our Discord server. There is also so much information in there about the Con Man universe, all of our storylines, our rosters, our champions, everything like that. Everything you need to know about the CMU is available in our Discord server. So again, guys, click join on the Discord server down in the description below. But still, while I've got your attention, I want to kindly ask that you make sure you leave a like on this video. Let's get this all the way up to 200 likes. I know we can, guys. I know we can get it all the way up to 200 likes. I believe in us. But also, everybody, make sure you are subscribed to the channel with your notifications turned on. And consider dropping a little donation using the Super Chat feature. It doesn't matter how much or how little. Any little bit is appreciated. Q, Q, Q. Uh, we... Weren't we going to get United States Championship and a new Tag Team Championship? Oh, you mean like redi redesigning the belt. Uh, there was rumors of that happening. It still might happen in the future. But as of right now, I have no idea. This program is aggressive in nature. It may contain themes that are So who wins Taker versus Sting? I honestly don't know. I don't know either, actually. You wonder if Undertaker would do the job. Oh, look at Buddy Murphy! The disciples here, AOP and Murphy! gentlemen allow me to introduce to you the man that single-handedly saved Monday Night Raw the Monday Night Messiah Seth Rollins I love this storyline. I don't know about you guys, but I love this Monday Night Messiah storyline. Wow! New Titan Tron! New Titan Tron! The Monday Night Messiah! Is here, man. Rollins is really getting in on this character. Trying to think of any ways to become more of a heel. Love it! This is great, guys. This is great. Elmer Membreno. Thank you very much, my friend, for subscribing. Welcome to the channel. Rollins coming out, shaking people's hands, going like, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I love this character. He's really trying to be CrossFit Jesus. <laughs> That's what he's trying to be. Monday Night Messiah. Seth Rollins 
Rollinses claim that forgiveness is a virtue and that his patience has been growing thin lately with Kevin Owens and his friends, but Cool, cool, go. Cool, cool, cool. Here we go. Seth Rollins in the ring. AOP as well alongside of Murphy. Here we go. The words of Seth Rollins. Entering our third hour, everybody. Thank you, Murphy, for the kind introduction. And thank all of you for making me the man I am today. Thank you for making me your Monday night, night Messiah. Messiah. Oh, thank you. Now, before we begin this evening's proceedings, I'd like to talk about the word sermon. Sermon was not a term that I came up with. This movement, this moment tonight was branded that way by the powers that be. I simply asked for a few minutes to come out here and talk to you truly. The sermon does Monday seem night moron. Considering what I have to say right now is divine. Brothers and, and sisters, we are gathered here tonight to celebrate progress, to celebrate the future, to celebrate moving forward in my vision. You know what's sad is that it's been so good since vision, Rollins has turned heel. <laughs> Phase one of this movement. Night, Lou Dog. Have a good night, buddy. Initial resistance as I thought it might, but we completed phase one last week. Please, please, a, a little respect. Please, a little respect. <laughs> please show me the respect. I have shown you. <laughs> Last week we completed Boom harder, one then. of this movement when we vanquished Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, and the Viking Raiders. Myself, Razar, Akam, and Murphy, we prove that through sacrifice, through dedication, through devotion, through belief, you can achieve whatever you set your mind to. But now, now the work begins. I do not take the responsibility of being your Monday Night Messiah lightly. I take that responsibility very, very seriously. Phase two okay. of this movement will not be easy. I believe the way they're acting during the sermon. Brothers and sisters, I understand your confusion. I understand your pain. Phase two of this movement will not be easy but it is necessary and it is for the greater good. For the greater good. Hmm. The 
because now it is time for us to seek out the weak. Hmm. To seek out the lesser than. To seek out the non-compliant. Okay. We must find the flaws in the system. Oh. And we must rehabilitate them if we can. And eradicate them if we must. Now, my family, my people, this is not a promise, not a threat, not a warning. This comes from my heart. This is the gospel. If there are any WWE superstars who remain non-compliant, then they will suffer the same fate as the weak. Okay. If you stand in the way of progress, if you stand in the path of the future... War! 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 Here we go, picking up this segment a little bit, and here comes the Viking Raiders! The raid is on! And here they come. <coughs> Rollins gets out of there. Buddy Murphy gets out of there. And here we go, the AOP starting to fight and brawl with the Viking Raiders. But there's Rollins and Murphy getting out of there. Oh, Murphy gets right back in there now. Rollins rolls out of harm's way. And Murphy driven into the knee of Eric. Side step through the middle of the ropes and into the steel post. Eric, running knee catches Akam or Rizar, one of the two. And Rollins is left at the top of the ring. But I bet you Kevin Owens is going to be behind him. There he is! Kevin Owens! Stunner! Hell yeah! There we go. A little bit of a st 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 stunner. For Sethi Poo. Yeah, I knew KO was going to be there. That's awesome, though. So, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what else are they building up to here with this whole feud at, at the current moment. Because I don't know if they plan on building up to Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. I don't know if they plan on having Kevin Owens and a tag team partner challenge for the tag team titles. I don't know, guys. What are they building up to? Are they building up to a one-on-one -on -one match between Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins? What are they doing? What do you guys think? Maybe KO versus Rollins at Mania? Could be. Could be, could be, could be, in just like a one-off blood feud, I guess. But like, still, we're we're a long ways away from WrestleMania. Like, we're only February. We got March and April. We still got two months that we've got to get there. Like, we are definitely getting into the uh, the time frame where the storylines have to be developed going into WrestleMania. But I still feel like there's got to be something a little bit more there for that story to make it all the way to Mania for us to care about a match between Rollins and Owens. Because uh, there's not going to be a title on the line. There could be tag titles on the line like Rollins and Murphy versus somebody. Um, I don't know who though. I was thinking that if they were going to go in the direction of bringing back Rated RKO, that Rated RKO versus... Uh, Rollins and Murphy at WrestleMania would be really, really fun sort of deal, but obviously they're not going in that direction. I think I will be okay with Randy Orton versus Edge. I think that will go well. <laughs> uh, well, Mania is on the third day of April, so really only one, but I get it. Well, we got a month and a half, my friend. Uh, we are on the 17th here, but yeah, we, technically not quite two months. We're into that area, though, where we... Where your storylines have to be basically set going into WrestleMania. You've got a couple more weeks where you can be a little bit wishy-washy. Where you can still fix things with the Elimination Chamber. And then the road to WrestleMania. Those six weeks that you have. The six week build. You can definitely build a matchup. And you can definitely finish a building a card. But you got to have some stuff there already planned. Otherwise the stories aren't going to matter going into WrestleMania.
Uh, what about Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens versus Samoa Joe? I don't know how you get to the Samoa Joe versus Roll or versus um, Kevin Owens part. I don't know why there would be a triple threat match. It's not like it's for a title. It'd be one thing if, say, Seth Rollins was the United States champion or something like that, uh, where after teaming and helping out Seth Rollins for a bit against Seth Rollins, now there's a title matchup and he wants in it, you know? Something along those lines. But that's obviously not the story that they're telling right now. Edge versus Orton could be the one to tear the house down. Looking forward to it. Yeah, that's one of those ones where you're you're going to be like, okay, this is a must-see matchup. And it is. It is truly must-see here in 2020. How cool is that? Four-way dance tag titles, awesome. Could be decent. Could be decent. This program is aggressive in nature. It may contain themes that are not suitable. What do you guys think about the rumors of Elias versus Cena? If that happens, Elias has to turn heel, right? Has to. Seth, no excuse respect. me. No what? Look, it seems your sermon didn't go exactly as planned. Oh, oh! Breaking news from Chuck. You know what it seems like? These men around me are the only ones that give me the respect I deserve. You know what? Kevin Owens, the Viking Raiders, they want to fight! I'm not going to get a fight against my disciples, the AOP and Murphy, tonight. Okay. Oh boy, this is going to be great. The AOP and Murphy will smite you. <sighs> I'm okay with that. So a challenge laid down for later tonight on Monday Night Raw, but we are now live. Hey, Styles! Good to see you, AJ! Good to see you, AJ. Oh, that's really good to see you guys. AJ Styles is back. That is good, good, good news. Too sweet for AJ Styles, everybody. Two sweets up in the air. Boom. Welcome back, AJ. When is Punk coming back? Phantomas thinks I'm annoying and he thinks that it's sad that people donate to me. Well, it's okay, man, that you don't get it. You do not have to sit here and watch, all right? I, I think it's annoying that you came into the live chat just to put me down when you could have left. Just speaking my truth right here, my friend. Um, thanks for being in here. Thanks for being in here for a little bit, you know, but be better, I guess, at being a human being. That's my advice for you. Take it or leave it if you want. Cool. Cool. Uh, are you guys excited about this trophy gauntlet match with uh, Andrade, Bobby Lashley, Rowan, Styles, R-Truth, and Rusev? Uh, it's what it is. It doesn't excite me, to be personally honest. I, I, it doesn't excite me. It's just some sort of match there. That's right, feast your eyes, the phenomenal AJ Styles is back on Monday Night Raw. I mean, come on. What would WrestleMania season be without me? Are we going to get AJ or, oh my God, is Undertaker going to be here tonight potentially? At your absolute best. No. Let me rephrase that. You are phenomenal oh. when that WrestleMania sign is up. That one? That's the gallows. One. Right there. The gallows pointing at the sign. Look at that. Undertaker could show up tonight, guys. And you know, AJ, uh, as far as we're concerned, your good brothers here, you're the new Mr. WrestleMania. Yeah, you are. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are we going to get Shawn Michaels versus AJ? Are we going to get Shawn Michaels versus AJ? Or is it going to be Undertaker? For you to say that. And being the humble man I am, I can honestly say I am the greatest superstar on any roster. That's true. No one disagrees. Oh my I mean, God. Is it going to be Undertaker or is it going to be Shawn Michaels? Who is it going to be? Keep going. Yes. And, and just Who like these gonna people be? here, I mean, kind of like these people. I mean, I have critics, believe it or not. 
Yeah, they say I'm not as phenomenal as I say I am. Huh. You believe that? No. No, you, you don't have critics. No. But here's the thing. When I win my match, that gauntlet match at Super Showdown, then no one can say anything. No one can say anything except for me. And you know what I'm going to say? You know what I'm going to say? Who's next? Oh. <laughs> I mean, I don't really care who it is. Is it Goldberg? As long as the WWE Champion is available, and who cares who that is? It could be Brock Lesnar. It could be Drew McIntyre. It could be Roman Reigns. It could be Ricochet. It could be The Undertaker. It could be Shawn Michaels. It could be Razor Ramon. It could be Diesel. It could be Sting with it when he had that little soul patch or something. <laughs> it's called a flavor saver. A, a flavor saver. I don't care if it's Hulk Hogan. I don't care if it's the whole NWO. Now we're talking. Now we're Too talking. Sweet, Too sweet, me. Too sweet. Wow. But when I prove my dominance at Super Showdown. <laughs> Another okay. Interruption? Uh, I think somebody's heard it up. Damn. I might have got myself too hyped up there. Ha! Ah, that's a letdown. Ah, oh, that's a letdown. That's a letdown. That's a letdown. Um, oh. That should have been a gong. Guys, 150%. That should have been a gong. Hold on a sec. I mean, hold on. You know, you know I was just joking when I mentioned your name, right? <laughs> like, I was, I was honestly, I was being nice. I was being nice to a lot of people. Really, I, no one believes you're ever going to be WWE Champion. Wow. I mean, and what have you done to deserve a title match in the first place? I mean, nothing. That's what I thought. That's, nothing, right? that's okay. So you, you just don't think that I deserve a title opportunity, huh? That's just what you think. Nope. Honestly, I ain't even mad at you, AJ. That's fine that, that you don't think that I deserve a title opportunity, but... The fact is, and whether you guys want to face it or not, I have earned my title match. And at Super Showdown, I plan on doing what many people think is the impossible, and that is beat Brock Lesnar, and that is become the WWE Champion. <laughs> that's, you think it's funny? You think that's funny, huh? You in a good mood, huh? Oh, that's really good because since you guys don't seem so sold, how about I prove it in a match against you, let's say, right now. <laughs> Challenge me. Uh, mighty big word there, little Ricky. We'll fight uh, off one match. two. Whoa, 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 whoa. 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 <laughs> Whoa. Easy, cowboy. Yeah, he's a cowboy. <laughs> AJ. Styles. AJ, there's no way I can allow your first match back on Raw be against this non-good brother. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Goof. And since you're handing out challenges, and I'm basically the toughest man in the building. Yeah, he's the toughest man in the building. I've seen you fight. I accept. I got this. Cool. That I'm a lot happier about. I'm a lot happier about that, guys. I'm a lot happier about Ricochet versus Carl Anderson here tonight because all I saw right then and there was them feeding AJ Styles to Ricochet and then all of a sudden what AJ Styles was just hyping up for a match against either Undertaker or Shawn Michaels or God knows whoever it is. All of a sudden, he goes out there and looks weak as can be. So I'm actually quite happy that they went this direction of Ricochet versus uh, Carl Anderson because Ricochet does need to be built up, right? He does need a good build leading up to Brock Lesnar. But he's not going to win against Brock Lesnar, so don't build him up too much. Don't, don't 
ruin some of the superstars that you have over at this current point who are going to be money makers for WrestleMania. And so I'm really glad to see that that is the match that is happening and not AJ Styles versus Ricochet because um, we've seen that before. We've seen that for uh, actually quite a few matches in a row. And it doesn't need to be rehashed here tonight, right? really doesn't. Oh, honestly, Colton Starman, I've been saying for years now that HBK versus AJ Styles is a personal dream match of mine. Um, and if he goes in that direction, he called himself Mr. WrestleMania. If they go in that direction, I would love a Shawn Michaels versus AJ Styles match at Mania. That's a literal dream match. That is a literal dream match. Send Ricochet back to NXT. He has done way better there, and his promos are way better as well, in my opinion. You want to know why that was, my friend? The reason his promos were way better down in NXT was because NXT was taped. You didn't have that live element. You didn't have that live fear that if you mess up, it can't be edited out. There's a big difference between live environment for TV shows and a, uh, a taped environment for TV shows. Ricochet thrived in a taped environment for sure. His promos are weak for for everyday TV. They are very weak. And if he's ever going to reach the top echelon of WWE, his promos got to get better. Sort of deal. I hope she does too, Primitive. I really hope she does, my friend. It'd be, uh, they, there's some missing people in our chat, you know? And our chat is great. I love the people in the live chat. But there's definitely some missing people who have been around for at least two years, three years now. And um, we don't see them in the chat anymore, which is kind of sad. Uh, Abhishek Raj says, love from India. Well, how you doing, my friend? Love from Canada. Thanks for tuning into this live stream, my friend. Adam Cole versus Shawn Michaels or Dolph Ziggler versus Shawn Michaels. Okay, I got to do I got to do Dolph Ziggler's versus Shawn Michaels. But let's be real. Adam Cole versus Michaels would be incredible. Incredible, like top tier main event for a title. Like, don't get me wrong, Dolph Ziggler versus Shawn Michaels is a dream match for many, many people, myself included. Does it main event the pay per view? No, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think you can put a title on that and make it the main event. However, Adam Cole versus Shawn Michaels as the main event. Mm, now we would be talking, right? Uh, this program is aggressive in nature. It may continue I might say Adam Cole for my favorite signing in the last five years, for sure. Eight, well, not for sure. Between Cole and McIntyre. Yeah, between Adam Cole and Drew McIntyre, I think are my two favorite signings for WWE over the last five years. Inside Cradle, kick out at two by Carl Anderson. Into the cover, count at two, kick out by Carl again. Oh, no way. So Luke Gallows and AJ Styles have been kicked out from ringside. Apparently, that happened during commercial break, everybody. So as of right now, Carl Anderson does not have any help down at ringside. Booster Seat says, hello, I've been here for six months. Awesome, dude. Thanks for being here for so long. Farmer says, I guarantee that if it was Shawn Michaels versus AJ, they could shut down the network and people would pay a solid 50. And here's, you know what? I'm going to get back into this again. Things like that are what make me believe WWE honestly should go back, or not even should go back. They should go towards a model where the big four, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, and Survivor Series are all pay-per-view for $39.99, for $49.99, whatever the price you want to set. I think $39.99 is really reasonable. Uh, and you got to pay for the big four. you got to pay for WrestleMania. you got to pay for SummerSlam. you got to pay for Survivor Series. you got to pay for the Royal Rumble. And make it feel like the big four again. Make it feel... Add that paywall. I know what people are going to say. Oh, it's I, I'm not going to like it because I can't afford to watch it. Okay, I get it. I get it, I get it, I get it. But we are spoiled with the WWE Network, guys. And I'm not saying take all pay-per-views off it, but take the big four off, charge 40 bucks for it, and watch WWE grow. Watch WWE grow in popularity. 
you're not going to alienate fans at all. You're just going to make them want to tune into those shows because guess what? They are paying money for it, and it's going to be a good show. Nice shooting star press there from two kick out by Carl Anderson. Gecko Rob, here we go. This is the perfect one. I think Ricochet is about to win this match. I'm going to read your comment, though, in just a second. Here it is. Oh, rolls through. Here he goes. Big boot to the face. So Gecko Rob says, don't create the standard. Can't make people pay 50 now. They dumped, they dumped it down. I won't pay for it. The monthly fee was wonderful. I get it. The monthly fee was wonderful, guys. It was wonderful. Just because they've went to that in the past be just because they switched their stuff up doesn't mean that there isn't a logical reason why they should do it honestly guys at the end of the day when people have to pay money for an event the people putting on the event have to put on an event worthy of forty dollars worthy of fifty dollars as of right now we wonder why wwe puts on events that are sub standard that are subpar because it costs you 9.99 for the whole month you're paying like pennies for the pay-per-view. So, as a result, we get pennies. Nice move. Ricochet wins. We get pennies on the value. And I think that's fair to say. The shows aren't as entertaining as they used to be when we used to have to buy the pay-per-views. You got hyped up about pay-per-views. You watched it with friends. You uh, you had viewing parties. There was, there was a community feel to wrestling when it came to WrestleMania season. It felt like, you know, a McGregor fight. It felt like a big deal because people would buy it with their friends. You would sit down. You would order pizza. It was like the Super Bowl. It was a once-a-year event. And now we get to this point, and it, there's none of that must-see. WrestleMania feels no different than... than uh, a random pay-per-view feels no different than say a fast lane feels no different than anything else other than the tv name of wrestlemania there is not much that separates it from say like even a royal rumble i know the royal rumble has its match survivor series has the versus type of feel SummerSlam is the biggest party of the summer wrestlemania is the biggest event of the year so make those big events feel like they're big events they've been called the big four for so long but i'm gonna tell you something right now they do not feel like the big four. It feels like it's a big zero that WWE has, and they just happen to have events that happen at the end of the month. That is the culmination of storylines. Let's get back to making the big four feel like a big four. I've paid $74 or $79.99, something like that for WrestleMania in the past to watch it on pay-per-view. If you are a wrestling fan, you will buy it. If you want to see what goes on the TV screen, you will buy it. And if you do not want to buy it, then you won't buy it. You know, I, I'm I'm tired of this idea that we have to have absolutely everything just because we want it. We want it for $9.99 a month? Cool. That's not how it's going to work. Or that's not how it works, right? I think that is... If we look at the best way to increase revenue for WWE, if we look at the best way to truly transcend the business into the future while maintaining a subscription fee because we know WWE likes their guaranteed money, that is the only idea that can come to my mind on how you go about doing it. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Truly, I, I do. I don't want this to be me saying that this is how it has to be, right? I don't want to say that. But I want to also hear some other opinions other than I'm not going to I'm not gonna do that. I will cancel my network subscription because it's too much money or I'm not going to buy it because it's too much money, okay? I, I, I don't want to hear that excuse. I want to hear... I want to hear... Let's, let's say this much. If WrestleMania all of a sudden rolled around and it was Shawn Michaels versus AJ Styles this year and it cost you $40, some of you will absolutely say, okay, I'm not watching that pay-per-view. But a lot of you guys would sit there and look at the card and say, is this worth my $40? Is this worth spending $39.99 on? Is it worth WWE having my money? If you say yes and you buy it and you enjoy your show, great.
But if you say yes, you buy it, and you don't enjoy the show, that's where WWE loses fans, loses paying fans. So it's on WWE's end to truly provide a show worthy of $40 to you guys. And I think they can do it. I think if they go into that mindset that this show right here has to be worth $40 to every viewer, I think they knock it out of the park nine times out of 10. I truly do. But they go into this mindset right here to a lot of pay-per-views saying, we've got your money. We've got your money next month. We've got your subscription. You're not going to cancel your subscription based off this. You're not. You're not going to cancel your WWE Network subscription because it's too damn good of a deal. You're not going to give up the next pay-per-view. You're not going to do that. So WWE knows they have your money. So when they know you, ha they have your money, when they're nice and content, they don't push the envelope. They don't push the card. They don't push to make a good show for us. They just write the storylines, write the culminations of the show, and let the performers go out and tell a semi-decent match. There is not too many moments in wrestling anymore that make you feel like, oh my god, that was worth every bit of money I paid for it. And what I mean by that, my personal experience for this one, is when I paid for Money in the Bank 2011. That was the first pay-per-view that I looked at the card when I was a kid. I know grade 11 for me, but when I was starting to buy pay-per-views, when I looked at the card, Money in the Bank 2011, I said, I have to watch that. I have to watch John Cena versus CM Punk at the end. I have to see how that how that culminates. I have to see it. And I paid the pay-per-view price, and I walked away from that pay-per-view saying that was worth every penny. Every penny. I want WWE to replicate that feeling in with the Big Four. I want everybody to walk away from the events saying that was worth my money. That was worth my money. That's what I want to see from WWE, and they've got the opportunity to do so. Here we go. We got ourselves a $20 dono from Kevin Langoff. Thank you, my friend. He says, totally agree with you, Con. During the Monday Night Wars, you could only watch on cable. Good reason for 10 million viewers on Mondays. People want everything for free. Imagine how much you will make con man if they go back to pay-per-view i'm not honestly worried about how much i would rake it it would help the channel immensely it would truly help the channel immensely but i'm honestly more worried about wwe prolonging the uh the must-see feel because right now we're every single month that the wwe network exists and that we get pay-per-views for 9.99 every time wrestlemania rolls around it becomes feeling like a little bit less must-see a little less must-see every time, you know? Let's get it back to must-see, and let's get it back to being glorious. Till I'm victorious. And I will defend, I will defend. Totally agree with you, Khan. During the Monday Night Wars, you could only watch on cable. Good reason for 10 mil viewers on Mondays. People want everything for free. Imagine how much you will make con man if they go back to PPV. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my guest, Liv Morgan. Liv, hey, your Liv. former friend Ruby Riot has taken a lot of credit for your growth professionally and personally. How do you reconcile both her vicious attack on you and also her assault on your character? Charlie. I was excited, as anyone, to see one of my closest friends return after battling back an injury. I was just as surprised as everyone else when Ruby Riot appeared. And in that moment, the rush of emotions that I felt when she came out to celebrate Pickle, you totally, victory. totally, totally, totally missed everything I said. I'm only talking about the big four. Leave every other pay-per-view on the WWE Network. Just move the big four off. That's all I'm saying. And toss Sarah's and my friendship aside like it meant nothing. Being betrayed by someone that you wholeheartedly believed in. That's enough to break anyone. And not long ago, it would have broken me. Okay. But I am not that puppy on a leash that Ruby Riot describes. I found a home in my own skin with the power of looking to the future with an open eye. Oh. And Charlie, 
Oh. In my future. What was that? I'm stepping in to that elimination chamber. I'm eliminating Ruby Riot from that chamber match, and I am moving on to a championship match at WrestleMania. Gotta appreciate the confidence. Guys, I'm going to sit here and say again, there is more to Liv Morgan's character than we are seeing. There is way too many kind of creepy vibes with Liv Morgan's character right now. Way too creepy, man. I, I, I'm still feeling like there is more of a Liv Morgan creep vibe going on. There's going to be something, guys. Why are they talking about Elimination Chamber? What are they uh, fighting for? For the chance to go on to WrestleMania to face Becky Lynch? That's what they're fighting for. War! 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 Everybody talking about Punk, I don't know why you guys are so fixated on Punk. Here is all I gotta say. People are saying that Punk is being blackballed inside of the WWE. No, he's not. But why would you think about this? If you only have, let's say, 20 superstars on your roster. I know WWE's got, like, a lot more than that. But let's say you've only got 20 superstars on your roster. You want to try to find the way to maximize the value of each and every single one of those superstars. The moment you start bringing in names that aren't even a part of your roster, that you can't make money with, you are going to devalue your superstars that you have on deck. You're literally going to take focus and attention away from them for a person who isn't even on your roster, who you are not paying, who you literally have zero control over. That is why WWE doesn't mention CM Punk, because fans want CM Punk and WWE cannot seem to get the fans to forget about CM Punk. Every time you mention Punk on TV, fan speculation grows and it blows up. So that's the reason why CM Punk is never mentioned on WWE TV, just because every slight mention of him blows the internet up. Hey yo, we got ourselves a $25 dono from Justin Beverly. How you doing, buddy? Uh, by the way, guys, I forgot to mention this earlier. We've got ourselves a new boss. His name is Kevin Langoff, I believe. Yes, Kevin Langoff. So, my friend, you have become a five-time boss battle champion. Thank you so much, my friend. Let's read this $25 dono from Justin Beverly. He says, agree with you, con man. Makes WWE responsible for their product. Here's a toast. Going straight to the top and becoming the bosses of all bosses. Oh, my friend. I believe you are. I believe you are. So, ladies and gentlemen, just like that, Justin Beverly swoops on in and becomes the new boss. And let's pop a little bit of the bubble Agree with you, con man. Makes WWE responsible for their product. Here's a toast going straight to the top and becoming the boss of all bosses. Thank you so much, Justin Beverly. I appreciate it, buddy. I really, really do. So, with that, Justin, you have become an eight time boss battle champion. Awesome stuff. Colton says, don't say they don't mention Punk. Rollins mentioned Punk two times in his promo tonight. What? Did he mention him twice in his promo? Did I miss that? Did I literally miss that in today's promo? <laughs> 
Don't hate like their trip. Book yours with Hotels.com and get rewarded basically everywhere. I'll be broken dreams. He did. Oh, okay. He's joking. Not by name, but yes. Oh, come on, dude. Ah, Colton, you're killing me, buddy. This is like Colton, man. I, I've I've read so many of your comments because you create good comments and create good conversation. But that's the second time within like the last little bit that you have said something that wasn't truly factual. <laughs> Uh, that's the second time recently that I, that I've went off of what you, what you did. <laughs> Vamal, you want to know what you got to do to be in here in the live chat? Do not come in and start causing crap from the second you are in. If the second thing right out of your mouth is, Steve, don't ban me. Oh my god. First thing out of your mouth is, Con, what do I have to do to remain here? I have told you time and time again. Don't uh, be annoying. Be respectful to people in the chat. Don't spam. Don't do everything you have done for the last eight months, man. I don't know what to say. I don't want you here. I don't want you here. <laughs> like, get the hint. It... <laughs> Anyways, let's let's go here, everybody. Let's get this going on in the Twitter polls. Who do you guys think is going to win? Uh, so we've got ourselves. Kevin... Kevin Owens and Viking Raider. Let's go Owens, I should say, and Viking Raider. There we go. Or will it be AOP and... No, Colton Starman, you're not getting missed, buddy. You're not getting banned, buddy. No, 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 no. I was talking to them all. You are good, man. Colton, you're good, my friend. Just making sure that you, uh, if you're going to be talking about certain facts that are going on, make sure that you are factual about it. AOP and Murphy. There we go, guys. All right. Right there, Twitter poll is live, everybody. Go on over there, twitter.com slash conman167. Make sure you vote in the poll. I don't know why everybody thinks that they're getting uh, banned all of a sudden. I was literally talking to one individual. <laughs> Um, guys, you're not getting banned. Please don't start this. This is weird. No, Waldy, you're not getting banned. No, Gotti Jr., you're not getting banned. Guys, you're not getting banned. No, but next person who says they're getting banned, they're getting banned, okay? <laughs> oh, my. Raw, um, it's been fine. It's not been amazing. It's been fine. Uh, the start was hot. Um... The sermon was okay. Uh, it's it's just been okay. It's just been okay. It's just been okay. I, 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 if I was voting in my poll, I would click just okay, to be quite honest with you guys. But that's not to say it's been bad. It's just what it is. If I could meet any wrestler who passed away, who would I want to meet? That's a good question. Any wrestler who passed away... Um, you know what? Roddy Piper. Roddy, Roddy Piper. I would love to talk to Roddy Piper. The guy's knowledge for the business. Like, put it this way. That was a man who never reached the pinnacle, who never reached the mountaintop of WWE, yet is one of the most over superstars in the history of the business. 
Rowdy Roddy Piper, man. That, I I would love to just pick that man's brain for how, how he just made his character so immortal and so necessary to the product and every little thing that he came up with. I, I think Rowdy Roddy Piper is one of the greatest characters in the history of WWE. And I mean that. What a power slam from Acom. Uh, Victor Allen Jones says, uh, I thought this was the road to WrestleMania. There's no buildup. We're in a weird, weird f state of flux right now with the WWE because, yes, we are on the road to WrestleMania. Oh, what a knee strike from Acom. Uh, and a kick out there from Eric. I forgot what I was saying. Uh, I was literally just saying something there. So yeah, the, the no build-up. We are in a little bit of a state of flux right now because WWE is building up to Super Showdown. They're building up to Elimination Chamber. And then they have WrestleMania. So, like, there's just too many shows kind of going on all at once right now. Uh, or at least within a short period of time that WWE has to try to build to. I personally think that this placement of Super Showdown is ridiculous to be quite honest it's ridiculously placed it's not good uh it should it should technically be this thursday it it should really 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 be this thursday at least that way you got a bit of a build up to elimination chamber but ideally speaking it should have been at the start of this month or around the middle of the month you know like last week that should have been super showdown just to give enough time to build to Elimination Chamber and then to build to WrestleMania. Instead, what we get is we get build all the way to uh, Super Showdown and Elimination Chamber, have Super Showdown happen, build a little bit more to Elimination Chamber like a week, have that match happen, and then build to WrestleMania. It's just, it's backwards. I guess I really haven't tried to get everybody up on the screen right now. So give me two seconds, guys. I'm going to get Akam Razar and um, Murphy from the one team. And, of course, Han or not Hanson, Eric and Ivar and Owens from the other. Just give me two minutes to do this here, guys. Nice tag. Oh, and a right hand there knocks down Hanson. Or, sorry, Ivar, Eric and Ivar. Ivar, not Hanson. <laughs> I still keep calling them uh, Hanson and Roe, guys. I've noticed that so much. Okay, where is Rizar? There's Rizar. Oh, big knee to his face, man. Big knee to the face of Rizar. Is that tag about to happen here, guys? I think we're about to see a tag here. Kevin Owens reaching his hand out all the way to Eric. Eric's about to tag in. And Owens has been tagged into the match. Here comes Kevin Owens. Big clothesline there from Owens. Now off the ropes. Kevin Owens ducks underneath, but a big boot reversal from Murphy. But a clothesline turns him inside out. Senton right on him. There's Kevin Owens. And now we need... Eric and Ivar. What? Did WWE just cut to a commercial break? WWE just cut to a commercial break, but like... Okay, that was weird timing for the break. That's okay there, booster seat. That is A-OK -okay to feel that way. Yokozuna versus Andre the Giant or Earthquake versus Andre the Giant? Yokozuna versus Andre. Without a doubt. Not even close. That's a dream match. That's a dream match, man. Oh, it's still showing it, but on the little TV. So, yeah, you lucky viewers of the USA Network get to see this stuff happen live. Personally, here in Canada, we don't. Not personally, but just us here in Canada, we don't. It sucks for Canadians watching WWE. They 
they try to really do it well on the USA network, right? They they actually do it very well on the USA network. But in Canada, it is not aired well. We don't get the split screen. We don't get NXT. The, that's my biggest gripe. The fact that we are still, we're here in 2020 after NXT has been on TV since like September. And Canada still can't watch NXT live. It's ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. I get to see it when I watch NXT, but I don't get to watch it live. Who would I book an Eddie Guerrero match against? Um, where you'll receive big discounts on a truck engineer to take on the snow, the sleet, and the slush, and the grill. Damn. Tackle winner. Uh, Ram Heavy Duty, Motor Trends 2020 Truck of the Year. Who would I book in an Eddie Guerrero match? Man, that's a tough one. Zach Atherton says Eddie versus Andrade. That's obviously like a. Yeah, that's that's a decent one, but is that the one that I really want to see? Uh Nice bluff, Eric. You bluffed your way out of that one. Your focus. Eddie Download the Pokestars.net app and play on screen and the airwaves. Tim and Sid, weekdays on Sportsnet. This program is aggressive in nature. I'm going to go AJ Styles. I'm going to go AJ Styles. Eddie Guerrero versus AJ Styles, I think is one of those matchups that when you see you don't think you don't think of the match being dream match at first, but then you get thinking about it. AJ Styles versus Eddie Guerrero. They could do a great story with that one. Very disrespectful, Con. Eddie is a legend. What do you mean, Eddie? Yeah, I know Eddie's a legend. What do you mean? What did I say? What did I say wrong about Eddie Guerrero? I'm, I didn't say anything wrong, did I? I said that Eddie sucks. What? Uh... <laughs> uh... What? I think no, you guys are messing with me. You guys are messing with me. You're messing with me. <laughs> You're messing with me. I didn't say anything disrespectful about Eddie. <laughs> Not a chance, man. I was literally going through my mind like, did I say that? Anyways, Kevin Owens going to try to make the tag right here. Tag has been made. Murphy pulls Owens right back to his corner. Sanguis, you say yes, you did one more time. I'm going to ban you. <laughs> I know you're joking around, man. Uh, yes, they are, West One. They certainly are, my friend. Kevin Owens trying to muscle his way all the way there, but AOP stops him in his tracks again and just pushes him right back into his own corner. Hey, Joey Litness Vlogs, how you doing, my friend? That'd be so nice, Primitive. If you if you do have any ideas, man, hit me up. <laughs> yeah, hit me up, dude. Uh, do I remember Hunter Gray? Of course I do. Hunter Gray is still in the Con Man universe. Where is Hunter Gray? It's been a while since I've seen him, my friend. What kind of main event is this? Um, the lousy type. That's what it is. Don't get me wrong. It's a big six-man tag team match, but it shouldn't be the main event. Uh, Frankie Lou John, Lou Yon, something like that. Yes, I will be live for Super Showdown. That is next Thursday, my friend. Not this. Next Thursday. And I'll be live with that. With six minutes remaining here on Monday Night Raw, I'm going to say the best part of the show was Randy Orton and Matt Hardy's segment at the start of the uh, show. 
Really has been. Tag has been made. In comes Rizar and in comes Ivar. Big boot there to uh, Rizar. Now Akum gets involved. Akum gets slammed down into the mat. And people ask me, will I be live with Impact tomorrow? Yes, I will. I also... I don't know what's going on with NWA tomorrow. I know it's the Circle Squared. And that airs tomorrow. And I believe we're going to stream that as well. I think if WWE ups their pay-per-view prices, it's only fair for you to make more here. Give me a few days to figure it out and throw ideas. Awesome, dude. Awesome, dude. In they go. Close line into the corner. Big double knee catches Acom. And here comes the double team, everyone. Ivar sent right into Acom. Tag has been made. Kevin Owens immediately goes all the way up to the top rope. Here he goes. Swan Ton Bomb cover to Acom. Kicks out of that one. When was the last time you missed a big pay-per-view? Would have been SummerSlam this past summer. I was actually at the event. That's the last time that I missed it. Murphy all the way up, though. Murphy misses the double stomp. Rolls through. Sees on the other side. Pop-up power bomb. Good night, Murphy, but broken up there from Acom. Sent to the outside of the ring. I think the big men are going to fly now. Here comes the Viking Raiders and the raid is on. Suicide dive from both the big man to the outside of the ring. And that was a nice move. And that leaves Kevin Owens alone with Buddy Murphy. Ducks underneath the clothesline. Attempts us. Oh, he hits the stunner. And Murphy just flipped inside out. But from behind, Kevin Owens just got attacked by Rollins. The Monday Night Messiah saving his disciples here from a loss tonight. And Rollins is just unleashing hell on Kevin Owens. But I think Ivar just saw this one. Yes, this is a disqualification end, everybody. It's a disqualification end. But the AOP from behind take out the Viking Raiders. Kevin Owens getting beat down by Rizar now. Buddy Murphy helped out by Seth Rollins. And now Akam and Rizar, both the AOP, attacking Kevin Owens. Man, somebody's got to make a save. Somebody's got to make a save, right? Rollins has a microphone. I told you this is what would happen if you stood in the way of progress. I told you this is what would happen if you impeded my vision. Oh, boot to the head. Kevin Owens, you have crucified me since day one, and now it is time for us to crucify you. What? You. What? Crucify. Crucify? This is how you finish the sermon. Okay. Street Profits gonna save Kevin Owens? I guess Angelo Dawkins and Montez for Wow! Dawkins just shoulder tackled Murphy! High crossbody takes him down, and the Street Profits take out the AOP! No way! Montez Ford after Seth Rollins now! Whoa! Rollins says enough of that! Montez Ford takes his shirt out! And Rollins gets out of there! Rollins gets out of there! Buddy Murphy is back inside the ring and he's just going to let his disciples do his dirty work for him. Right hand there from Montez Ford. Angelo Dawkins with a spine buster to Buddy Murphy. And I think Montez Ford is going to go flying. Montez Ford. And on the other side, it's Ivar. Ivar and Ford. Owens. Stunner! Ford, Ivar, both of them went, oh my god, the height that Ford got! Fro 
Frog Splash! Cool, man. Montez Ford shaking that top rope like crazy. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. That was fun. But here's the thing, guys. That's not a main event. But that was fun. That's not a main event, but it was fun. The height Ford can get is insane. He's going to be a giant star in this business. I promise you guys. I promise you. So, here we go, everybody. Real quick, I've got a few things to say here in the live chat to certain people. You are obviously entitled to your own opinion on the show, right? Obviously entitled to your own opinion. First of all, all the stuff about the pay-per-views moving off the WWE Network and selling them for money, you know, the big four, that's all stuff that I'm suggesting. That's stuff that I am suggesting. The stuff that is going on with WWE has not changed, everybody, okay? It's still available on the WWE Network. That is basically that. Nothing has changed. No, they are not charging you $49.99 for WrestleMania. No, I don't know how you guys mistook that, but you did, and it's okay. Also tonight, Monday Night Raw was not the worst show. It is not the worst Monday Night Raw. It was not terrible. It was just okay. There was good things at the start of the show. There was rough segments in between. And there was a kind of ill-placed main event that was still decent. Overall, guys, decent show. Not a bad one whatsoever. But it's also not the best show. Does not top what they did last week whatsoever. But overall very entertaining. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure you leave a like on this video. Also making sure you are subscribed to the channel. As always, everybody, that is going to be it for me here today. Make sure once again, you come on over to Conman Reacts and drop a subscription over there. If you would like to see my reactions to Randy Orton and Matt Hardy, that's going to be it though, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. I've been Con, and that was Monday Night Raw.